Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here with another Throwback Thursday. Of course, we have a skeleton crew thanks to isolation 2020. It's 2020, Corona is a thing. Uh, but today we are revisiting the Spoils TCG. This is a card game published by a company called Tenacious Games back in 2006 originally. Later uh, would be acquired by the company Arcane Tenman who's responsible for making Dragon Shield sleeves and accessories. Uh, but this is a game, uh, it's, it's really kind of interesting. You've been following along with these throwbacks uh, for a lot of reasons. There's a lot here before we even dive in. But effectively, it's a trading card game. They call it a tournament card game at the time. There's a lot of like copyright stuff going on right then. Like 2000s was pretty thick with that, trademarks, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, effectively, if you've played Magic, this is going to remind you a lot of that with some tweaks. And I didn't realize how similar it was at the time. But we had we had grown up. We started with Pokemon and moved through a lot of the games we've been throwing back to that were distinctly not Magic. And then uh, when I was at college, actually, this came out in I think November of my freshman year of college. Uh, had a few friends show me this game, and again, having not really uh, been heavily into Magic at any point, the entire system seemed revolutionary. And I think for people, I saw a lot of people chatting before we hopped on, uh, definitely saying that like system-wise, this feels stronger and more like it's it's like a fine-tuned Magic. Uh, with a very different theme. I always heard that it was designed by some Magic Pro Tour folks. I think it was. Yeah, and it was basically like the the classic problem with Magic is what happens if you don't draw land, right? It's like any game, right? So the Thrones had the same thing. What happens if you don't draw your resources? Uh, a lot of times you just lose. I mean, most of the time that's what happens. So the idea was you could always play a card from your hand as a resource. It just didn't have quite as much value as an actual resource. And they, they used, and the system just works so flawlessly well. Yeah. Uh, that, that's kind of why we're here is that we want to show off this system. The system is excellent. Yeah, because they, they replaced that. Basically, the mana screw is not possible, as it's mm -hmm. called in Magic Circles. Uh, they also added a stat to the creatures in the game, which is called speed, uh, which adds, uh, you know, going from two variables to three uh, is not just addition. Like, it's a multiplication effect on, like, how these things work. One of the things I really respect about this game, and it, it kind of spoiled me ah, hello. Uh, on it, is the templating, which, which you see a distinct <laughs> lack of in a lot of other games, especially a, a few years later we get into, like, a lot of Fantasy Flight games, and that's something they struggle with. Uh, but almost always on spoils cards, it's like a cost in bold with text, a line, effect in bold. Here it is. Uh, and it keeps it super clean. But that said, uh, something about spoils is worth knowing. Now looking back on it, you know, my 18-year-old <laughs> self didn't quite recognize it as much at the time. Um, and we put this in the description, but I want to put it out there as well for anyone that's just catching this not really reading the description. The game itself very much features... Violent, lewd, uh, kind of over the top version. It's very of it. over the top. It was designed to to be over the top. Uh, I think at the time that yeah. was one of its characteristics. Just like over the top, extreme. It's also got a ton of like pop culture references, mm -hmm. um, and that was part of the. It was it was like almost like a dark humor, like mm -hmm. just like me take on reality. I mean, it's not reality at all. It's very different. Um, but that's just worth saying. So if any of that kind of stuff makes you uncomfortable or you're watching this around people that would be uncomfortable or maybe it would be inappropriate for, uh, this is not the stream for you. Yeah, and it was always pitched as a satirical kind of approach to a lot of the tropes and a lot of the, the things in the games. But that said, a lot of it, I still look at it now and I'm like, ew, like that's a little cringy to me. Uh, so just be aware of that and be ready for that. I would not suggest this for kids. Um, a lot of the, the, just the concepts and really the execution, particularly the art, and particularly around women, uh, is not good. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> just be aware of that. I mean, well, uh, we, the history of this game for us, you know what's funny? I didn't, when I was, I didn't think of the spoils as having any kind of a theme that was like outrageous at the time. It's not weird. Like I knew that it, I, I didn't even, I, I wouldn't even say that. I didn't even know that it was like out, like insane. I was just like, man, this game is good, and I, I, the only thing I remember about the cards is literally the text. Yeah, it's like, oh, deadly striker. That does. I use four influence, and that thing goes away. Or like, and then I look back at some of these cards now that we've done so many throwbacks, and I'm actually appreciating the holistic of what a game is. And it's like, oh yeah, that art is doing some weird stuff. Or like that, oh wow, that bathtub. Okay, yeah, I get what's going on there now. Yeah. But I didn't really appreciate that back then, yeah, which I mean, is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> for for sure. <laughs> I think it's a sign it was the times too, right? Like mm -hmm. 2006, that's definitely at the tail end of the CCG gold rush in my mind. It's also just at the beginning of kind of the golden age of board games. 
And so the market itself has changed so much since then. But I think at the moment, right, and it, I think satire is probably the best way to frame it. That I think that, that was the intent, right? That was the intent. Uh, it, and just like any good satire, uh, it's only <laughs> good if it's offensive. So, um, but the reality is, like, at the time, I think the game was meant to come in and basically th be thrown in the face of the industry. Because, like, it came out in some, some context here. Uh, their first year, they were having this million-dollar prize circuit, right? They were definitely trying to step in and say, this is a better game than Magic, and we're going to do Magic. We're just going to do it better. Um, and so they had these big cash tournaments that we would travel to and never got paid Ks, for. 13Ks, weren't they? Yeah. 14Ks, 13Ks? I think it was 13,000 an event. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was uh, supposed to be a million dollars across the first year. It concluded the world championship that never happened was supposed to be on a cruise liner, mm -hmm. and you had to earn your spot. So basically, you're trying to either win a certain kind of event or earn enough points throughout the thing to basically qualify to get invited to go on this cruise, where there yeah. would just be this cruise full of spoils players playing the game for like $100,000 or something crazy. Uh, so conceptually, I mean, they came out swinging big. I think they had investors. They were Tenacious Games was out of Seattle. Um, and they, they had a lot of experience, both in the industry and in tech. And so like they, they, they knew what they were doing. And they had that tour bus. Remember yes, the tour bus? The tour bus. So, so John Finkel apparently, chat saying was uh, heavily involved in the development of this game. Is a known Magic player. Uh, and what Spoils did is they came out and they said to the Magic community, kind of, but like not expressly, but really, hey, our game's better. Our game, you can win more money, and our game's more fun. Yeah. So come play it. And that was kind of the gamble of mm -hmm. like, can we take, it wasn't like, let's get a new audience into this. It was, we've done this better, Yeah. so come on over. Yeah, and so that's where like you get into, um, you know, the, the mentality that would create that kind of game that you just described uh, doesn't surprise me at all that they would go with a very extreme theme Satirical, mm -hmm. edgy, Over right? The top kind of stuff, it's literally yeah. just like when you're willing to put a million dollars out on the line in prizes in that first year and make a bet that big. Like, you're just in a different. It, it's almost like Wolf of Wall Street to me. Yeah, right? it, it really is actually. Where it's just That's like exactly right. What be, what's yeah. normal becomes just crazy, and you can kind of just be extreme and do whatever you want. Um, and you know, maybe it would work better now or worse. I don't know. But the the main thing <laughs> is, it wasn't trying to get new people in right. to tabletop, no, right? It was no, trying no. to to do a new thing. Um, but that said, I mean, the system is great. Uh, there is a lot of the art and a lot of the theme that is hilarious and funny. I'm not sure there's been a better system that, that executes the play resources and play progressively stronger things onto the board. Yeah. I, I just don't know, and the draft and sealed is so good. Wait, give us the history. Give us the history of the game. Because you you're, you have, for some reason, your yeah, memory is so very good on these they, things. They, they did a really cool, uh, I think it's like, uh, there's a uh, linearness to it in my brain, right? Like uh, some people don't store data in their brain in the same like yeah. minds in order. <laughs> like if I start, I just keep going, but I couldn't. You have put... data in there? Yeah, uh, I'm human. I swear. <laughs> have you seen that Mark Zuckerberg video where it's like he's questionably human in the way he responds? The only, well, I watched them. that Sweet Baby Ray's video, and that's all that I need. That's to the know. best one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he'd be a character in this game, by the way. He'd, he'd be an <laughs> elite, would, yeah. one of the elitism characters. But um, so the. It I, launches. It's I barely good. caught onto this. Just open beta. That goes That's on. what I was going to say. Yeah. So I barely caught this phase. There's an open beta where they had open beta packs, and the art was like a lot of sketches and mm -hmm. like white and black, no color, and like just basically like very early. And they let people test the game, provide feedback and stuff, and they sent open beta boxes to stores for free. Um, and stores were able to host like draft events for this kind of thing for like that made money, right? Mm -hmm. They're paying twenty bucks to get in, but the store paid nothing. Yeah. Um, so the stores that are interested are like, this is a super appealing proposition, and, and maybe if this is the next magic, like this is crazy. Um, but then the first set came out, I think it was like November, it, it was starting to get cold. I remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to school across the street at ORU actually, which is funny, because I was at a private Christian college. <laughs> Uh, and then I was uh, trying to, uh, so, so I, I, I trying to show your story. friends the yeah, it's a, the actual story. <laughs> and we'll pull up some pictures in a minute. I think this will be a fun little uh, mem memory jog for us. But I had some friends that wanted uh, that were interested, and then a guy uh, that we knew owned a shop in Broken Arrow that had opened, that, which is like 20, 30 minutes away. They were having an like introductory uh, event. I remember that, yeah. And so I had learned how to play the game from some other friends, and I went online and I, I ordered some stuff to like be, be able to put together a deck and play at this event. Uh, and the stuff came uh, in, and it was not the right stuff. Mm. So then. I emailed, and that's a whole different story that was uh, maddening and frustrating. Wasn't but, it the origin of Covenant, really? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it is. That's why this game's interesting. Or not, this isn't why. But that's one of the reasons this is an interesting throwback is like, so I had ordered online, 
and they sent the wrong stuff, and I emailed them, of course. And it's 2006, so it's like not exactly advanced internet days, right? Yeah. Like it's still relatively young. Um, and so I emailed them, and they were like, we don't know what you're talking about. What we need you to do is mail back what you got with a list of what you should have received, and when we get that, then we'll actually send you the stuff we should have sent you. And I was just like, what? Yeah. Like, okay, maybe send it back to you. But like, mm-hmm. you want me to write out a list of things that you were supposed to send me that I ordered from you. <laughs> so that then you will send, and you'll send it back once you get this. Anyways, I had to go to that tournament that weekend with basically the starters that my friend had given me. Um, needless to say, I got crushed. And on top of getting crushed, that was the event where I'm sitting there, plastic table, mm-hmm. kind of dirty you know, room. Uh, halfway through the tournament, a bunch of Pokemon kids run in. We're on these plastic chairs and tables, squeezed in. It's hot because there's all these people in there, mm-hmm. and the heat's on. It's a cold time of the year. Uh, and I just remember sitting there, and I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, wh- what am I doing here? Uh, so then, you know, I, I bought some product there, and I went back to my back to college, and I had a few friends who were – I'd basically been playing the game with. John Wilson's one of them. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was like, well, like – in retrospect, when I got out of the environment, right, it was like, this is still fun, and I still enjoy it, and I still want to play this game with my friends, but, like, just the back-to-back online experience, in-store yeah, experience, experience yeah. not having a good deck and playing this thing, and it's just, like, this overwhelming feeling that, like, no one cares. That was it, right? Mm-hmm. And we had grown up, um, you know, in a small town. There wasn't a game store, so we were used to hosting our own stuff anyway, mm-hmm. like out of my uncle's movie barn. The movie barn. The yep. movie barn. Two O's. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it wasn't. But it should have been. It Am I been right? Probably. We'll count um, up front. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we were used to that, but then we would always come up to Tulsa and play in the bigger events in the city. And so then now I'm here, and it's just like, I mean, just like no one cares. Yeah. That, that's really it. So that was kind of the like, burning rage that that led into the next couple months because it was only like two months later that uh, we launched the Covenant website. We launched the Covenant website and the product we were selling was Spoils. Yeah. Right? For, that yeah. was the first product we ever sold on, online. Um, and then a, a, a month or two later, uh, in the, the spirit of the, the team name, right, it was like that's when actually I started touching base with you mm-hmm. and you were you were posting to your Zanga all the time back then. I did. And you were I writing. Had a, I had a wild Zanga, man. It I was had wild. Some thoughts to share. You did. Uh, Freshman we're, year we're getting, college. We're dipping our toes back into on Facebook right now. Sophomore, yeah. But anyways, the so you, you had that going so I reached out and I was like, and we played games all our life together. We went to different schools though and you went to college a year before me so we had, had not been as in contact. But I was like, hey, I have this game you should try and you tried it and you're like, this is fantastic. And then you're like, but I don't know if I can do the whole CCG thing. I was like, you don't have to buy any cards. And you were like, <laughs> I was like, I can do that. Well, hold on. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, that's when we started TeamCovenant.com. Mm-hmm. Because, and it was separate, right? So there was co- literally CovenantTCG.com. Was that like the eBay Pro Store? It was an eBay Pro Store, yeah. yeah. You pick a template, throw in some stuff, and do your thing. But the uh, um, TeamCovenant.com was a blog. Uh, because it was like, hey we have thoughts and like I I think we should write about these things so we started writing that went well people started paying attention to us also paid started paying in product um, various people that I knew like Joey from the old team bus that won the Star Wars TCG World Championship to write articles and I remember Thomas and Bernie yeah. and Will Morgan and mm-hmm. all these all these names of people uh, start writing articles and I was sending them product they were writing articles and that was getting us attention and we were selling singles and booster boxes and stuff um, but what happened with the spoils, that was kind of the start of us. Yeah. Uh, but the, the travesty of the spoils is that they made big promises based on uh, commitments effectively from investors. And then something went real weird with yeah. their biggest investor. I was heard investors had pulled out. Yeah, it, it went bizarrely weird. Whatever um, contract remember, you had must um, not have been very so good. The CEO Scott <laughs> is someone I actually would later like meet up with when I went to Seattle and like, We've talked on and off for years. He's yeah. great. Uh, you know, he's just a very <laughs> nice, kind person uh, who's very smart. Um, he's been very successful in business since then. But they had a big investor pull out, and so they basically had to choose between, uh, if I remember correctly, printing the next set, yeah, or paying out all the cash money they had already. That's right. I remember that. had won because yeah. you know there was like an eight to twelve week delay in like receiving your cash money. How many and, sets are we in at this point? So they did first edition, part one, and then it's second edition. Mm-hmm. So it was like first edition, second edition. Then it was seed one. Seed one was the set that they were like, because there were two sets in. Um, and those were the blocks, right? So they did a three set block, a three set block, and then there, a, was, there was a, I feel like there was a third set before seed. 
Uh, well, your memory is better than mine, but I only ever remember going First edition from... part two, I remember that. Yeah. First uh, edition part one, first edition part I remember the white two. boxes, right? And uh -huh. Seed was the like silvery blue. Yeah. Uh, I think Seed was the third set. But that was the set they decided to print, and they decided to just basically push back prize money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we're still going to pay it. We're trying to work it out. And they were getting strung along by this investor guy. Oh, of course. Um, so they print the set. But then, of course, if you print a set of cards and all of a Thank sudden, uh, players, did he correct Yeah, first into part one, first into part two. And then that was the first block. Yeah, okay. And they came in yeah. with seed, yeah. So players start realizing, like, hey, you were supposed to have your money, the check to me within, like, 12 weeks. And it's mm -hmm. been, like, 18. And it's like, so then they get hesitant to buy product mm -hmm. and to play in events. And this creates a doom spiral, right? Because if Seed comes out and it does as well as Part 2 had done, they actually are, they were successful enough that they could actually sustain. Yeah. But they just had to, they literally, I mean, it was like a 12-week window, right? That's so nuts. If they just had 12 more weeks of cash, they may have made it. Uh, but instead, of course, this starts the doom spiral. Um, Seed comes out. Seed's fantastic. I think Seed was one of my favorite sets. That'll be in, involved in our... We're going to be doing Draft and Sealed today, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and that just goes from there. And then... And it just started limping. Yeah, I mean, it just slowly turns yeah. down. So Seed 1 comes out, Seed 2 comes out, and I think that was it um, before it crashes and burns. Um, the you know, it, they, the investors bail, the whole company collapses, it gets scattered to the wind, it gets sold off to Arkane Tinman. The first thing they did, they put out a little box called Seed 3. Mm -hmm. which was like 60 cards, right? Just the, the fixed set. You remember that little orange box yeah, that Will, Will brought yeah. to the store? Will's on the chat here in Facebook, too. Oh, man, what's what up, Will, Will Clark? And it's Matt been Garrett. a long time. Love to see you again, Will. Yep, seed. Uh, but Will and Red, Will and Red were some friends we played with, um, play tested with there from Tulsa. We were the Chelsea, Chelsea boys. <laughs> and uh, they actually, at some point, were like the OP managers. Um, and so then he's dropped by the store when our store had just opened in 2012, mm -hmm. was about when this was happening with the Seed 3 box. And they, the Arcane started putting uh, spoils cards in Dragon Shield boxes. Yeah, they put too. a card or two in the, the box just to, to promote it. And they, they definitely, they put out stuff. A lot of the product we're doing here is actually, you'll see Arcane Timmon on the back, because that's what is available to use. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things they put out, which is cool, is this Seed Saga box. Um, and so it's basically the cards from Seed 1, 2, and 3, with like 30 new cards as well. Uh, so that when they were trying to reboot it, basically, players could get these cards because the original print runs had obviously evaporated over time. Do you remember how long it was before... Was there an official folding of Tenacious before it was bought by Arcane Tim? And I oh, remember yeah. it going out with a whisper. So there was this like big, long period where... Um, and I forget his last name, but there's a guy named Ryan uh, who was one of the last... It was like Ryan and Scott were the guys. And then I remember Josh Little um, mm -hmm. was another, uh, Josh and Joe, Joe Huber were two of the designer guys. And the, but Ryan uh, was like the defender at the end where it was like, because it, basically the forums turned into, once it, once it started like sliding, right? It was like, everyone's like, I'm not buying any more until this. And yeah. then the, everyone else that wanted it to stay alive was like, yeah, but if you do that, like there's, it's gonna, like, it's gonna it's, really it's fail. It's gonna really fail. Yeah, yeah. So then you really don't get your money. Um, which, I mean, I totally, I get it, right? It's like, if you're playing this game on the, and you're owed five grand, like, you're not going to keep diving right. in, right? Keep if that's a problem. Keep so, doing the whole thing. at some point, I think Tenacious filed for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And during that process, or whatever was going on there, um, is when I think Arcane Timmer approached them, made an offer for a, the IP and whatever, I, maybe the product that was left. I, I don't know the full details mm -hmm. of that. I just know they owned it. And they said yes, and they sold it, and Tenacious disappeared. Yeah. And I think for most of the people involved in Tenacious, they also disappeared. Like, and I, I thought at that point that maybe we had a real reboot coming up, with Arcane Tenman having some financial resources and, and maybe a, a more stable release structure. Yeah, I mean, if you have a, a long-standing company like Arcane Tenman uh, behind it, you, you would think that it would be possible for them to, if anybody can, like a long-standing tabletop company mm -hmm. with resources to sustain... Uh, but collectible games are hard, and I think they learn that very quickly. Like a, a peripheral maker does not necessarily make you a collectible publisher. publisher. Like it's a, yeah. it's a very different thing. <laughs> uh, so it, it's a really fascinating history. It's obviously ingrained in like the beginning of what we did. But you know, back in I think it was '09. So that was '07 is when we started, January 1st, 2007. Mm -hmm. um, so then it was like literally by like '08, like early '08 mm -hmm. is when spoils is like. This is bad. This is really bad. I think the last set was early 08. Um, August of 08 is when Monster Apocalypse got announced, mm -hmm. which was the, the, the pivot for us, right? A big, big pivot. And so then Monster Apocalypse hit, and we pivot heavily into that. And then at some point in that phase is when Spoils kind of like 
breathe one last breath. Yeah, I remember you shared that article with me. I think it was an article that went up or something that said like it had been bought by Arcane Tenman, and we were like, oh my gosh. And we're lifelong fans of Dragon Shield. This could be so incredible. Like, that was like, oh, yeah, like this is interesting. Um, yeah, Josh says Arcane hired him to design the game for a while in transition. Hey, Josh, hope you're doing well, man. It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to get this thing back on the table. Um, I also want to shout out real quick uh, Dan, uh, who sent all this product. Uh, oh, nice. Daniel Sotelo, uh, basically, he has a bunch of it. I remember um, seeing Dan Sotelo. I remember that name all over, like yeah, tournament um, reports and stuff. I want to say. You guys were all very good, and I was. They, they, oh, he was, not. they were definitely good. <laughs> he picked up a ton of the product towards the end, um, and so he has a ton of it. I, I'm in a couple dead Facebook groups now, dead CCG Facebook groups, all the throwbacks I've been like. Asking rules questions, collecting stuff, and whatever, <laughs> trying to find cards. You've got a new obsession. Yeah. And so, but I saw him post for anyone that's really interested, you can find him. And uh, he has, it's like these, the boxes and stuff are like 10 bucks for a box of cards or whatever. Nice. But uh, for anyone that, that happens to be uh, super interested. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so that's. what happens during the Arcane Tinman years? Arcane Tinman, they put out a handful of products. You'll see they have these basic boxes of awesomeness, um, which is a nice, nice deck box. Like, it looks good. Comes with uh, five different decks, resources, some promo foils and stuff. Uh, and this was kind of their, like, try to get people into the game. They did the second one. They did the Seed Saga. They did this Ungodly Mess set. You kind of had a feeling that it was a bit of a poisonous brand at that point, right? Because, like, the retailers had been burnt. The players had been burnt to some degree, right? And so it was like, oh, what's this coming back? Like, there was a lot of hesitancy to be like, oh, yeah, spoils. Like, that kind of a vibe. Yeah. It wasn't... I mean... We felt that whenever we were talking to people about it. Definitely a hesitancy. And I think the environment, right, both times. I think 2006 is a really interesting time to be launching a CCG, mm -hmm. right? It's like at the, that was actually probably the, the time. Yeah, the end of the CCG over, rush. Yeah. That's the kind of game that could still be here today. Um, and, but by like 2012, we were kind of in a distinctly non CCG era, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was just not, board games were on the rise, um, LCGs were on the rise, non-collectible, um, and it, it just was a very harsh environment, I think, for a collectible card game to try to take root. And I don't think, uh, what, I, what I gleaned from the Arcane 10 Minute Experiment is that if you're going to do a collectible game, you can't kind of do it. You need to just, like your whole life has to be Three sets that. a year, yeah. big tournament series, lots of support, draft and sealed events. Um, th there was actually, I think, hypothetically for a minute, uh, a version of the future of the spoils being talked about that I was really interested in, uh, which was uh, essentially they did this kind of like sealed draft box. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, if like once a year there was a, a $50 box of spoils that came out that was a sealed cube. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, that could, that could be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then that just never really... Really, really went anywhere, and I think it was just kind of a lot of like half. You know, they were they were making sleeves. Like yeah. that, that's their core business, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like um, I, I don't think you can do an actual CCG like part time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And then uh, meantime, did you have those pictures? I'm mm. going to show those pictures at all. If you got them pulled up, I can cut to your. Do you have your uh, let me HDMI plugged in? Yeah, let me. Uh, get so to this, full screen. this is just to really appreciate. This, the, spoils is a tremendous. Uh, history for us. I mean, really, this was this was the game that got me back into playing card games. Because uh, I had I had been, Zach and I had been playing all throughout high school, and then I went off to college and dropped that habit. It was right? kind of what brought us back together. It really, really did bring us back together, yeah. It was like a, a rom-com like, moment where Zach like invites me to play the spoils, and I like him hesitant, and then I, I finally uh, fall I in made, love again. I made an offer. It's too good. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, hey, you don't yeah. have to pay for this. Yeah, and then it literally launched the business. It launched Covenant. Um, and we played it a bunch. One of our, our early tutorials uh, was spoils. Let's cut to some pictures here. There's some absolutely hilarious Now, um, this pictures. picture, to give some context, this is Steven at my old apartment we have that like <laughs> tablecloth in the background as the background this is the spoils of the tutorial that we did and so we knew Arcane Timmon right Michael from Arcane Timmon uh, great great guy um, great product but uh, we, we were doing a tutorial for them mm -hmm. like an official spoils TCG tutorial um, you can see this starter product box in the middle it's like that's a, that was one of the first things they did is they were like we need to have a really incredible starter product and I totally agree uh, that that was that was a good thing to do uh, but that's Steven recording that and obviously having a good time. Uh, good time with that old microphone down there. Oh, the yeah, the mic. whole thing. I was actually working on my pandemic here well before the pandemic. That's yeah, right. Yeah. This was a good decade plus ago. <laughs> that was, yeah. That's pretty crazy. These are just random photos, so I don't know what's coming next. Yeah, there it is, the other angle. I love that cross-legged under the table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like 
med meditative state. I was on my way to my Eastern philosophy degree at that point. Yeah, <laughs> so and then I was all Jonathan in. with a full swoosh of hair. That's cool to see. He's I got think. his old school camera too. Look at that. Yeah, man, the big thing. You can hear yeah. I love how the the like tablecloth is hanging off of that door there. Like it's just like shut in instead of like actually <laughs> doing anything. And you see the TV trays here on the bottom left, just for some detail, uh, which is fun. <laughs> Uh, and this is, uh, this is Stephen interviewing Red, which is one of our friends from Oklahoma, who's one of those he's OP managers. Too. Yeah, he's doing great. He's apparently If you're out there, Red, I'm, I'm so happy. Every time I see your feed, um, I, I'm just so happy for you. But this is kind of their reboot, uh, where they're coming back in, trying to, trying to make it happen, we're interviewing them. That's still available on YouTube. <laughs> uh, this is the glory days. So this is Stephen with a beard from, <laughs> woo, I don't even know where. But the crazy thing about this one is, this was a, like a, probably a year before we opened our local store for the first time. And we were actually hosting a store championship out of a hotel because no other local stores were willing to host Let it. Me, I'm going to get us in the, hold on, I'm going to get us in the box here. The camera and camera. There yeah. we are. Uh, yeah. I just, I love that picture every time. There's some good beard pictures of that. That was when in that sealed event in Tulsa. Yeah, yeah. So we, this was the early, it's a fascinating thing. It's like, well, there, we can host an event. We don't necessarily have to have a store. And so we did it in a hotel conference room. Yep. And then we were like, let's open a store. <laughs> let's, let's get over this hump. Uh, this is funny. This is me and Steven. Uh, I haven't not had a beard in a long time. But this is like 6 in the morning after an all-night playtesting session ahead of uh, Gen Con. Yeah. We were super excited because the lifelong dream when we were kids growing up was to, to be able to go to Gen Con and compete at like a world championship kind of thing. And so we were really amped to be going to Gen Con that year, and we were getting ready for it. And so we uh, stayed up long enough that the donut shop opened. Yeah, and then just we went and had donuts and the kind of giddy, uh, giddy excitement you can only get when you haven't slept. Yep. You know, there it is. <laughs> uh, this is Stephen like a boss in a tournament with his beanie on <laughs> at Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> that guy must be great in this game. He looks so edgy. <laughs> this is also the same Gen Con, important to note, where you made me realize that I actually like Chinese food. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I brought you Chinese food I was from in the, the food court. We were literally 20, as much as we could be tournamenting, we were tournamenting. And then Stephen was like, I'm going to go get us some food. And he came back with Chinese. And I was like, I don't like Chinese. And it's like, well, I'm starving. Yeah. And he was like, this is delightful. And from that moment on, you love Chinese food. There's Stephen. Just Stephen. That iHeart TCG you, shirt we sold. That's right. You can see right behind him is a, a cat named Hans. Mm, uh, later banned from many competitive <laughs> <yes>. games. <laughs> but he was the one that you were like interviewing him and because he was winning a lot of events. And you're like, what advice would you give us? And he's like, RTFC. <laughs> it's like, what? And he's like, read the card. It's like, all right. Will do. I'm gonna go over yeah, here Mox and have a good time. Yeah, there too, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> In the hotel, there's Will. Oh, Will, yeah. my good friend from high school. There's us Just doing some late night play testing for the game there. Yep. Because we couldn't get enough there. Will <laughs> 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 sleeping. <laughs> Will being tired from the late night play testing, uh, which is really funny. And me and Steven, my long curls and that. I wish I had that bag still, actually. I like that little drawstring blue spoils bag. Look at that. Is that a is that, that cardboard deck box rock in there? Is yep. that cardboard? Look, yeah. Hold on. You still got it. Boom. Can they see us right now? There it is, yeah. Spoils. That's not the one with Team Covenant written on it, is no, it? No, that's not. That was way earlier in our existence. I think that's it. And that's it. it. Yeah. That's, that's the recap. <laughs> so anyway, this game has a lot uh our history is very much tied to this game early on. Uh, and it's pretty fascinating, actually, to think about how integral it was for all of us being here right now, uh, which is really cool. I, uh, <laughs> I saw a comment here from Josh that seems relevant, because Josh seems like he's the person that knows. He says, you guys are so right. Either you go all in on com competition or you have to go super casual. It's too bad it never found its home in either mode. I was pushing for the latter when we failed at the former. So a, a sad story, but ultimately a story that we should uh, take a look at right now. So what do you want to do? Let's start doing some sealed cracks and packs, et cetera. Yeah, so here's how it's going to work. Uh, we have a box here of Seed Saga, which is what I'm wanting to use the most. And this is uh, from Seed 1, 2, and then the seed, some of the Seed 3 and some new cards. Uh, and I'll give you a basic rundown. It was really cool. I went to read the, the rules last night, <laughs> and this is uh, fan fantastic. This is how it was back in the day, too. This is the rules. Only about this much of it is actually rules. Uh, and then this is just the glossary. Mm -hmm. So like it's super simple. Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of give you a rundown, and then we'll open some packs and talk about cards and memories and stuff and start building decks and whatnot. But we're just going to be doing a couple couple sealed pools and hanging out and showing the game and talking. Yeah, that's right. And just another reminder, I know some a lot of people have been joining us from the Fantasy Flight announcement of the scenario pack, the new scenario pack. Um, this game does have a lot of lewd 
content, uh, a lot of over-the-top stuff, uh, some uh, violence, gratuitous violence, I would say, uh, and, and everything in between. And it was kind of pitched as such. So if that's uh, going to be bothersome, or if you don't want to see that, if you have kids around, I would very much suggest them not being a part of this particular experience. That's right. So let's take a look. And if something is uh, too too edgy, ah, I'll just, just throw it, it out. Yeah. Oh, uh, so it. in the spoils, uh, if we can bring up the tournament faction, and this will explain Ooh, kind wow, of the you whole. You threw the biggest wild card imaginable. Yep. You yeah, have it's a tournament a card. faction card there in the production booth. It's a. Uh, we'll see. Mm mm. I guarantee you not. I don't know. Read it for me. All right, the tournament faction. So it's got a couple things going on on it. That's hilarious. I like that I just threw a curveball. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I saw it. It popped up. OK, there, there it is. is. Great. Okay. So you'll see up top it says influence 25. Your influence is your life total, basically. So the point of the game is to take your opponent's influence to zero. Uh, you'll see a couple other things We're under the image. And it's cool that that art on the back is full bleed. But it's like this big, huge. Uh, you throw it on the top down. Party. Uh, you guys can see that. Yeah. On the back. Very nice. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So starting resources, uh, it says any two staple resources. Now I'm going to grab a couple here. There's five different colors in this game. And these are like extreme crazy versions of these resources. Let's we'll just go to the table. Yeah. Let's just call Hit it. Hit me good. with it. Um, and so these are the, like the factions in the game. The first one is purple. It's called Obsession. And it's a creepy, crawly, Cthulhu-y, tentacle-y weirdness. The second is greed, and this is uh, gold, like money, right? Um, and it's got the the mouths, the See, cats. This is really a, this is really kind of it helps you understand what the spoils is about. So first of all, all of the the resources in the game are essentially kind of like uh, just human psychological traits, like rage, deception, elitism, greed, and obsession. Uh, so these are, and not necessarily great ones. Like these are all. These are all bad. These are all bad. Actually, characteristics. It's almost like the seven sins, right? That's right. And then meantime, like with greed, the greed faction is literally uh, a group called the Mao that are quite literally fat cats. <laughs> literally. That's it. Actually, fat cats. They're actually fat cats. And so. then the elitism is like the like uh, elvish. They even have the elite text, right? Um, but it's elvish, like tinkering machine. Uh, people, deception is the like rogy, uh, you know, uh, sneaky, any kind of sneaky stuff. And then the warlords, of course, are the rage, rage, rage characters. It's you have the fighters and the killers and the violence and all that kind of stuff. So um, there's five different resources. But if you go back to the tournament faction, you'll see starting resources, any two staple resources. So these are, these five are the staple resources. And they provide one resource of that kind, right? Mm -hmm. So you could technically start with like one greed and one deception, and that would be your starting resource pool. Any any two or two of the same. A lot of times people would do two of the same, and then that's that's the resource you start the game with. So the, you know you're going to have two resources. You always to start, start with the game. two. Yeah. The next thing is a starting draw. It says eight going first, nine going second. So right. if you have tempo, you get a little less cards, uh, et cetera. Uh, restore ability. At the start of your turn, restore all depleted cards and detach all resources from your faction. So the way it's going to work is Untied when you everything. spend money, you attach it to your faction. When you spend your resources. And then at the start of your turn, you'll unattach them and you can spend them again. And then everything untaps, of course. Develop ability. At the start of the turn, uh, you pick one of the following. Draw a card or play a resource. So you, you either get a card or you can play a resource from your hand. And as we mentioned earlier, one of the key components of this game is the fact that any card in your hand can actually go down as a resource. Uh, if it's not actually a resource card, it goes face down. Right. Um, and so it still counts. It can still generate a resource. It just won't do threshold, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, lastly, during your turn, you can always do this. And this is what I mean by the templating on this tournament I love faction. love this about yeah. this game. You can draw. Up top is the title, draw. It says cost, pay three. So three resources. You detach them here. Uh, effect, draw a card. Right. Simple. You draw a card. Yeah. Uh, and the way the chain of reaction in this game is going to work is your opponent does something. So, like, I pay all my costs. So, pay if costs. I say I'm going to draw, I pay three. Now, a respond. window happens. Mm -hmm. If I did that, you get to respond. You can pay any cost for any ability you want if that happens. Then it comes back to me mm -hmm. if you did. Mm -hmm. And then I can do the same thing. We go back and forth until we're both done. And then it, we go back down the chain and everything resolves. Right. Last in, first out. First in, last out. Yeah, same same thing. Yep, that's the old accounting <laughs> counting principles. Uh, and also on your turn, you can always take an action to pay four and play a resource. So you right. play one you at the start of the turn, and you can pay four to play another one. So yeah. you start with two, right? It's very common. You start with two. First turn, you'll put one down, and you'll you play a creature for three or something. Next turn, you'll put one down. You'll pay four, put another one down, spend that one on something else, 
go in the next round, now you're at six. And that's like six. ramping up. That's, yeah. that's so if your deck has a lot of like heavy, expensive stuff, you can accelerate into those high cost things and kind of lose in the early game. Uh, or you can continue to just draw cards. There were some players uh, that would, what was it? Uh, do you remember who did the uh, Purple Haze deck? Will Morgan. Will Morgan. I remember I heard this insane story and it drove me crazy that this was the, the, the truth. He would play the, he was in the finals against somebody else, and one person in that side, not Will, had been playing a resource every turn, which was pretty standard, and had gotten to like 13 or 14 resources. And I believe Will was at three resources and had drawn cards every single turn as his static action. And it was just like, he just stayed at three resources all game. Are you kidding? Like how? And just had card advantage and was doing weird stuff with it. That is exactly the kind of thing someone like, Will Morgan would do. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, exactly how he plays. It's like, how is that? I can't believe that it's that uh, kind of interesting to make a choice. I always thought it was just always do a resource, but apparently you cannot. <clears throat> you cannot do that. Okay, so here's what I want to do just to, to, to dip our toes. Uh, I have a pack here. You can grab a pack too if you want. I just want to open, open it a pack. and look through some cards and we'll talk, talk through some stuff and then we'll pitch this and then we'll actually open packs and draft, or not draft, we'll do the sealed standard thing. Yeah, Evan, <laughs> you are not alone. It says, I remember seeing the Decade of Decadence box at a con and being 100% turned off to the game. That was the one that was very, like, flamboyant uh, cover on it. It was... I mean, it that... It was not great. That is that is a lot of the content in the game. So, man, seeing some of these cards is crazy. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up a card just so you can get a sense. I have a heavy sword. <laughs> man, yeah, isn't it great? Yeah, just yeah, immediately yeah. right <laughs> into the brain space. It's a heavy sword. So you'll notice the templating on this card um, is... I'm making sure it's coming up, right? Yep, there it is. Uh, it's hilarious. It's got this giant sword. It's blue, though. That means it's a Warlord card. You'll see this little logo. What's up, Ken? Under Ken the culture name. on the chat as well. <laughs> All up? the names. What up, Ken? Uh, you'll see the little logo under the name Heavy Sword. Uh, that's the Warlord symbol. If we look at the Rage resource, um, it's got that same symbol here. Mm -hmm. And so that little icon under the name is what's called a threshold. And so to play the Heavy Sword, you'll see the three in the top corner. That's a cost. You have to pay three. But the threshold is how many of those resources have to match. So you can spend any three resources you want, but at least one of them has to be a Warlord resource in order to play the Heavy Sword. Now, this is where the humor comes in. Right under the name of the Heavy Sword, in the flavor quote, it says, Stand still, will ya? Uh, because it's a giant sword, and it can't hit you because you're moving around. Uh, and you'll see a few other things about the card. It says Warlord item gear, so it attaches to a character. You'll see that in bold. Uh, it says the attached character gets plus two strength. You can spend four, you'll see that icon again, four uh, Warlord resources. The attached character gains an additional two strength. So you can basically pay four to give them two strength at whenever you want. And then uh, handoff, you can pay for deplete the character so you exhaust them uh, that's not fighting to attach them to a, this to a character. So it can move around. You just have to pay a lot of resources to do it. And the key thing about Threshold, too, is that you just have to control that many number of those resources. You don't have to spend those. You remember that? It's the truth. It's in here. Really? So like if I have two rage res if I have one rage resource, I can play one threshold cards with 20 right. different resources. You got yeah. it. So as long as you meet the threshold, yeah, you must control table. that many resources. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes a certain amount of sense. So uh, it's pretty standard. You see they have the lines across the card, uh, which just give you a, uh, really, it cleans out the It just the shows you the that. different abilities, yeah. Oh, look at this. I didn't know this was a thing. In the back, I have this foil uh, staple. Hall of Great two. Justice? Hall of Great Justice. So this is a different faction that you could use. We had the tournament faction, but this is, obviously you see it's uh, influence is 20. Uh, starting resources, one of them has to be a rage resource. One can be any other staple. Uh, looks like everything else is basically the same. Except and for that for Great Justice. They all order. have that bottom ability. And this was a big deal in like the sealed and draft environment particularly. I remember the elitism one was bustedly good. I think you could give a plus one to something if you were running that one. I'm not, let's not mess with these today, or at least not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm going to play some classic. I'm not, not playing on that. So, yeah, and you can look through and just call it any notable cards that are worth uh, talking about. I'll show you some of my favorites. Um, this, actually, this is a good example. Look at the Dwarvish Grimmelkin. Uh, judge me by my size, do you? This is a one cost uh, character, and it requires one threshold for you to play it. But it's a good example of how threshold can be used in this game. So if I have two mm. banker resources yeah, yeah. Uh, controlled, I draw a card whenever I play it, which is just way better. I mean, it's incredible. If I have five in my control whenever I play it, 
when it enters play, I draw a card. So I draw two cards whenever it enters play. And then if I have all of these, like, what, eight, nine, nine. threshold in Banker, when this card enters play, I will end up drawing three cards. So I'm paying one, putting a body on the table, and drawing three cards. Absolutely insane. Yeah, and you'll notice a few things about this card, too, that are worth, worth saying. It's got this flip up two ability. Um, and so flip up is if you put this card face down as a resource. Yeah, so like I can play this and use it as money for throughout yep. the entire game. And at some point, you can pay two <laughs> as long as you meet the threshold and flip it up. That's right. Uh, and put it into play. And then the other thing is you'll notice uh, now that we have a creature, uh, and they're technically characters. But the stats, you'll see strength, life, and speed. Strength and life work how you'd expect. Speed also probably works how you'd expect. When a fight's happening, uh, we're going to resolve all the stuff at the same speed at the same time. Yeah, like so, Star Wars TCG. It's yep. not surprising that we kind of pick that up. Right? Yeah, but like in Magic, right, there's not speed. There's just creatures attacking creatures. That's and right. Big, crazy things are moving just as fast as the tiny little creatures. All right, let me see if there's anything else that really kind of this, shows this, off some ideas This here. card, at least, is nostalgic for me. I love that, that art. The, the Hidden, Hidden Dagger. dagger. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, I forgot how much I love that Hidden card. Hidden Dagger's great. This is just, a, it's just the definition of a sealed or a draft card right here. It's like, ah, just a little buff. Attached character gets plus one strength. Gosh. And you can hand it off. And you can do that. That's the cool thing is whenever you're assigned, isn't it? You assign damage, and then you can use abilities, right? Yeah, so you basically, attacker declares who's attacking. Mm -hmm. And you can either attack a faction or you can attack a location. You can't oh, attack characters. Oh, yeah, locations. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you declare all your attackers, and then attacker gets a chance to play actions or abilities. Blocker gets a chance to play actions or abilities. Then blocker declares blockers. Mm -hmm. After that, we each get actions and abilities. Then you find the highest speed. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's a three. Uh, all the threes, the attacker assigns all their threes damage. Mm -hmm. The blocker assigns all their threes damage, and then actions and abilities, and yeah. then all of them resolve. So you have all these chances yeah. To, yeah. to actions and abilities, but it's real clean. All right, very nice. Uh, so a card that uh, sticks out to me here is called Clay Node. Mm. <laughs> the nodes. Clay I node, about yeah. The nodes. Yeah. Uh, the predecessor to the node network. So it costs two. It's got some stats. But in the first couple of sets, they had all these nodes. Basic node was another one. Basic node was uh, never. But deck. the clay node, when it enters play, you search your deck for a node card and reveal it. If you do, put it in your hand. When this card leaves play, destroy all their nodes. So they basically go find each other. But if any of them get destroyed, they all go down. Yeah. Uh, just because they're connected. Great early nodes. pressure from those basic nodes. They were one one four, right? Four speed. That was the thing that that sealed yeah. them for me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I also got a Blazing Shriever. This is a mm, classic love the uh, card. It, it does its thing, but it's got. This is the, a great example of the cost effect ability on this in Flame. It's got a cost: pay two, destroy this card, pick a character location, inflict X damage to the character location where X is the number of Warlord resources you control. Yeah, um, just super clean. Very good. And uh, let's look at Extravagant Contusion. Uh, which the flavor text of brained with a bling brick is pretty hilarious. So this is a tactic, this is like an instant card that you can play uh, out of your hand, and it has an extra cost, it tells you, so you pay zero, you gotta have two banker resources under your control to play the card, and then you choose a number for X and pay X, pick a character with numeric cost X or less, and you destroy that character. So this is an example of kind of how removal works. Uh, different factions do it a little bit differently, but everybody kind of had a way to get big bodies off yeah. the table. A banker just had to pay to do it, right? You just had to pay <laughs> I mean, the money. it makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah. Pay the man. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my rares here, so in these packs, you get two rares and a foil at the end. But one of my rares that I think is hilarious is the uh, Avuncular Marilion or Marilion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> that guy. Flavor text, rescue pirates can. <laughs> and then in quotes at the bottom, but keep, keep some for Uncle Law. <laughs> it's like, what is happening? <laughs> you also notice on this card, like the, the, this is a banker card, it's yellow. It's also got those diamonds back behind everything. On the top left behind the number is a diamond. On the top right, there's diamonds tucked in. It's all gold. Versus like, uh, I'll pull up the Blazing Shriever again. And it's just got a very like militaristic blue blue vibe going on. So they definitely play to that. Last thing I want to show off in this pack is called Accidental Invention. And mainly because uh, this was a common theme too in a lot of the elitism mm. cards. They had all the elite speak everywhere, uh, which was just high speed certainly at that time. Uh, and one of the things that really kind of got a lot of people's attention was that they all of the card kind of flavor text for for the elitism faction was was done in that style. Yeah. So it gave it a very like unique feel. Um, you want to crack? How many packs do we do for sealed? So there's in these packs there's 14 cards. So we're probably going to need about 14 or 14 about four packs. Okay. So if you just want to grab three more, you I'll can use that more. one. And then let's just, I think we can just play some and pull them up as we go and yeah. kind of enjoy it. And I'll, I'll be walking back through my draft and seal. It's just the kind of thing where once, you, once you've once you done it enough, you don't you never forget it, how to ride it, you know, riding the bicycle. Yeah. 
These packs are not the easiest to open, and I'm a good pack opener, as we've decided. <laughs> oh, I love that Black Scourge of the Brine. I remember loving this in Sealed so very much. <laughs> love it. A Pirate Mao. You remember Evan S? Oh, yeah. Melty Art. That's what I mean. It's kind of gruesome. Oh, I remember this guy. Enormous and Uncooperative Golem. Yeah. <laughs> I love right. that guy. <laughs> oh, man, the Fiendish Fez. That's, a, that's an absolute classic. Yeah, that thing does work in Sealed, too. Check out this foil, uh, Giada the Elegant. Is it related to Gideon? Yeah, probably. Uh, another Sword of Great Justice, yeah. Loses one strength and one life for each token on it. If it would be destroyed, you put a token on it instead. So it just basically gets worse every time it dies, but it doesn't die for, for much. This is also something that's very funny. One of the rares I got is called Time Traveler Tourist Trap. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, and so they had these, these uh, Micromajig characters. They were these little robots in elitism that went around. But that, that's what those Micromajigs are. And you can see them getting trapped in that uh, pool. I'm a, dude, I'm about, to, I'm about to totally wreck you with some memories here. How about the Slinking Bandito, the worst oh, yes. card in the game? Oh my gosh. That's, that's aggressive. Everybody lost to this card at least once <laughs> in their time playing the spoils. This card does work. It also introduces a mechanic you probably can guess at, which is called Covert. Uh, so this character, a Covert character, can only be blocked by other Covert characters. So you get this Slinking Bandito out, and it's two costs. You can get this out first turn. You start swinging, and it gets plus one for each token on it. So eventually, you got six strength you can't block, seven strength you can't block, eight strength you can't block. If you don't have covert characters or removal of some kind, the bandito just runs right over you. The old bandito. Yeah. And you can see on I like the you can see the template and it's got like the card playing rogue uh, rogue vibe. You remember the the giant's fork defense? Oh, don't I? Man, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and in the lead under it, freedom. Gambling den. Hungry, Hungry Idol. I remember that one being uh, very, very good. Another Sword of Great Justice. Wow, looks like I'm going to be running more like. Uh, it is typically six packs, I think, for Sealed, too. That's six? what it seemed like Dan was saying that as well. 40 card deck, six packs. All right, we'll do six. How many is this? Four. And there used to be, wasn't there a Sealed Starter? Or a Sealed like pack, like a big box? There was you got a, box a and Sealed Starter. It came with like the resources and the faction. And then a couple packs in there, wasn't there? Like just Maybe. normal cards? I thought. I don't remember. Oh, I remember Encumber, though. Oh, my gosh. That's ah! what's up. Check out the Abominable Hamster, man. Yeah. Who do, you don't remember that. You got to remember that. Oh, Lord my gosh. Almighty. <laughs> do I ever. That's so funny. Oh, this is cool. I got Arrogance, which is a double elitism resource. Very nice. Um, and I believe that's Will Clark on there. Looks like. Absolutely is Will Clark. Unquestionable. What up, Will? Pulled your card. Essence of Elitism, that's classic. Man, you remember the cashier's window? <laughs> Do I? Mm -hmm. Man, there's so many funny memories. I love Rogue so much. Yeah, right, Matt, so we're, go, we're in Tulsa. I'm gonna grab we're in Tulsa more. right now. It's 81st and Lewis. That's where our store is. We're closed right now because of, uh, of COVID, but yeah, we're here. I love that they put Will on Arrogance. And Ken said, yeah, it's a comp pack. It was basically three booster packs. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah well, that, they that got a me. <laughs> oh man, do you remember Acidic Phlegm? Yes. That's gruesome, but I love that card. It just says damage, doesn't it? I was a burn. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you start learning about yourself as you look back. <clears throat> Will says he has the artwork for that mounted in his hallway. Arrogant indeed. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Check this out Athalamund, Man God, the Iron Fist. <laughs> look at Hello. that fist, too. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I remember that guy. That guy did work in Limited, too. Oh, that, there's a lot of good bombs in uh, Limited. Really good bombs. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just opening pack, and then I'm what I'm going to do one, is yeah. I'm going to sort by color. Oh, you got that Agile High Women. That was one of my absolute favorites, too. Yeah, and so we'll get there, but I'll sort by color, and then I'll, basically what, what I do is I usually start with two resources of one color, and then in my deck I'll have resources of another color. And you, you guarantee you have that two threshold immediately, and that'll be all your low cost stuff. And then uh, you're just looking for a couple resources the other kind. Slinking Bandito. Delectable Boon, very nice. <clears throat> all right, Sly Belker. Ooh, Tiny Sarome. Aren't those things awesome? Uh -huh. 
All right, so if I remember how to do my sealed correctly, I think I start by sorting the piles. I, you know, I had a good method for this. I actually got pretty decent at sealed. It's the only thing I could really do well. And I think you sort into factions, then you kind of look at how many colors you've got, and then you see how many removal cards and like kind of bomb cards that you've got. You're looking at thresholds. Yeah. If, you have, if you have something, as an example, <clears throat> if you have two piles that only oh, need yeah. one threshold, you yeah. can start with one and one, and then include the third color in your deck. Yeah, that's all coming back now, yeah. I knew we'd get there. Yeah. It's amazing. It's kind of a, the memory doesn't go away. Underpaid Ancestor. Oh, I love you so much. I remember <laughs> you. Pay three to put it back into play every time. I yeah. had so many good times with that card. And bad times. It was the good times. Yeah, Jeremy, it is amazing. We're, we'll, uh, once we start playing, uh, you'll get to see it in action. It is 100% a better version of Magic. It just is. Aside from like the player base, but... It's kind of important in terms of like yeah, there's not as many people to play it with, but the resource system, if if I could take anything and just bring it back in any kind of a format or theme or whatever, it would be the system of threshold resources and a faction card that determines the framework of how your game works for you. Uh, this one in particular this is the only one that I really cared about. Just any game where you have the ability to pay money to draw cards, you, you, you avoid so many problems. It, it reminds you of, of Netrunner, right? Yep. Like you always have the fundamental actions that you can do. You can always make more money and get more cards. And I think any game that has that, you have such freedom in how you want to play it that it really allows the skill to shine through. Okay, here we go. What up, Tim? Jeremy's saying, is it possible to get mana screwed? It's not. No, uh, you, you start, start with, with two, two, and then you can always put any card in your hand face down as a resource. So it doesn't help you with threshold. Like, we'll pull up multi-attachment man. He's got that elitism logo under his name. So you have to have at least one elitism in play to play him. But uh, as long as that's in play, you can play him. You'd, everything else can be face down. Mm -hmm. And you really get there quick. Like, your thresholds, typically, within a couple of turns, you're pretty much there. <clears throat> Yeah, so then now what I'm doing is basically separating out my one uh, cost thresholds and then everything else. And a pretty ideal sealed start, uh, one of the common ways to play is you choose the two with the best stacks of one, one threshold and you start with those resources. And then you include probably like 12 to 15 of the third resource type and then that's where you'll have your high threshold powerful cards. Oof. I'm seeing some good some good opportunities in here, man. Must be a banker. They're just all good, right? Yeah, most of, most of the cards are just fundamentally good. I definitely have to go into Warlord. I've got a ton of high threshold cards for them. That's how ah, you kind of start to know. Ah, Delicious Golem, yes. Strangulate, that is a cl absolute classic. classic. Anathematize, another absolute classic. All the hits. Arcane Monkey Ritual, that was good. Didn't, didn't that do discarding from hand? Yeah. Discard two cards, yeah. <laughs> Lion says, I can see why this game was marketed at competitive Magic players. Not paying tournament winning seems like it would cause it to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that will cause some issues. This may be one of the better pools I've had ever, Zach. <laughs> Judging by basically my memories, which are not ideal. Mm -hmm. And here. Okay. And you've got to have at least 45 cards, and that includes your extra resources. So basically, I'm going to look at my one thresholds. I, I think I'm going to go that way. I feel like I have the cards to go, like basically pick two, one threshold, and then go into one. Yeah. And I'm going to do that pretty quickly just so we can get a game going. Yeah. Ah. Well, I'm definitely going Rage. Yeah, I am as, too. As my high threshold. Do you, they, do you have all your high threshold cards in Rage? Yeah. I think they just kind of did that more. It seemed like they always had those bigger hitters. Okay, done. How about you guys? Mmm. Rogue got some good one threshold cards. It's 
definitely one of them. Yeah, I'm just going to call uh, Warlord as well, you know? Why wouldn't you? And then Obsession. And it's just really smart how this works, right? Like, you, you have your threshold unlocks stronger cards, so that's going to happen later in the game. But you don't have to have it to do the basic functions of the game, like drawing cards and playing things. So it's, uh, it's really slick. I love it very much. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then creatures also. That's very important. Got to make sure you have enough creatures. Yeah. All right, here we go. Creatures are relevant. And I'm going to do that. That's my next thing. This is a waste of time. Hamster, the brain monkey, the moon calf. One. It's not that good. So you got to watch, too. A lot of these one threshold cards also have things that really make you want to run more threshold. Yeah. I mean, you got. It's definitely not autopilot. Yeah. So, okay. All right. I could maybe get into that. Uh, yeah. This one. I don't like that pool very much. Sprint. Yes. 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 I got two cashier's windows, which I absolutely love. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's definitely one of the pools that you go with. Mechanic. Uh huh. And this X one. Man, high court of demands. How about that one? Whoo! Remember the old pepper strategy? Remember the sprung mm -hmm. jig? Mm hmm. Oh my gosh, don't I? Insane. All right, let's go some Baker. Let's get some Baker in here. All right, I think I'm good. Got my deck built. You going with 40? Uh, 45. 45 cards. But don't forget your resources. Right. They count they towards count. your deck. Yeah. What's your normal number? So Are if you're in 1-1? One, one one I'm doing 1-1, one, one, and then the color I'm going into, I have 12 of. It's usually 10 to 15, depending on how, how bad you need your resources. OK. So I can, I can, I can go with you on that. In Constructor, a lot of times, people would play two of the same starting, and then they would have like 12 to 15 of whatever they're looking for in their deck. Yeah, whatever their secondary was. And that's nice, because then you can just run all two threshold cards of your beginning faction, yeah. and then accelerate into your stronger cards as you go. OK, so I'm going to go into Rage. Yeah, it's exactly it, Ken. Hope you're doing well, man. Good to see you. He said, the spoils is such a cleaner system, yet it cleaner and simpler system, yet at the same time offering much more depth, which is exactly what it did. It set out to do, and it's impressive that it did it. And your starting resources count towards your deck size, right? Two, three, four, five. This is so cool having Josh on. Josh, I'm glad you're here, man. So yes, we wanted to make sure that the heroes of our story were actually good cards as opposed to throwaways like MTG has done in older sets. Magic has since fixed this with the introduction of Planeswalkers, which are basically just our location cards. Former Spoils R&D members worked on Magic, uh, so I'm not going to say there are any cross inspirations happening. Uh, as I have no evidence of that. This is exciting. 32, 33, 34, 34, 44, 45, 46. So I need to cut one card. If These you want count to... towards your early, your deck size, mm -hmm. right? Your early ones. Yeah, so you got to have that. You got to have that. One. Mm. Um. Cut there. Okay. You gonna throw me a D six. D six. Actually, I need more because we're gonna have to track our life here. And hand me. Usually do it by uh, piece of by paper, pen and paper. Yeah. Yeah, because there was also like a. The tournament tiebreaker was who had done the most damage because there's ways to gain life. So you had to go back through all your like, that was notes. That weird, yeah. 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 yeah, that was tough. 
Uh, how much did we start with? So it's on their faction. 25. Right? 25. You want to hand so me five, five sixes? Uh, on a even, it's Steven. Here, give me that blue in, and you can have that. On an even, it's Steven. Steven, you're first. All right, I'm first. So that means you Sh get eight cards. Shuffle up. And I'll get nine. And I don't even remember the mulligan roll in this game. I think you ended up getting one less card. Am I misremembering that? I got you if you want to. Uh, so how to start the game. Uh, yeah, you may choose any number of cards in your hand, put them on the bottom, then draw the same number of cards to replace the old ones. It can be done once. So you don't lose, there's no disadvantage. Just filter your hand, put it on the bottom. But you won't see those cards usually during the game unless yeah. you search them out. I like my hands. That's so funny. Oddless Charger. I mean, this this mulligan's about as good as the Arkham mulligan. It's the same idea. Yep. Except you don't shuffle afterwards, right? Which may be po more powerful. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that is true, Lion. Uh, one of the coolest things about this game is this card back. People um, still talk about those card yeah. backs. I, one of the big things I didn't know, my brother Tim is what who turned me on to this, but it basically in uh, the card back being the same either direction mm. is prevents it from you being able to like under like cheat, right? You can like accidentally cheat. Any any game that has a logo on the back that like, oh, there's the one card that was the like card upside turned. down. Yeah, okay. Uh, but you can't tell uh, with these cards. It cool. was, I mean, the competitive idea it was everybody knew. It was done on purpose, man. Yeah. It was all done on purpose. They definitely they knew what it what uh what it was. Tom was saying it's the London Mulligan. The London so Mulligan. I'm starting cool. here with an, one obsession and one elitism resource. Oh, that's cool. Right. I did deception and greed. So we're gonna have a full spread. But we're both going big warlord. Yeah, that's cool. We're hidden warlords. <clears throat> uh, Evan, yeah, sleeves would prevent that unless you're using clear sleeves. Uh, but they also did make sleeves that had that logo on the back, which is super cool. Or that uh, templating. Yeah. I have some in my deck box here. It feels so dirty to play without sleeves. Here we are. And yet, it's fine. It lets everybody know that we're not taking it too seriously. Okay, I think I'm shuffled. Do you want to cut? You're good. Out of, out of a sense of history? I'd do that right there. <laughs> All right, five, five, 10, 15. I'll just attach these once. Once I use them. 20 and 25. Kaya saying, OMG, time to go on a scavenger hunt. What are you scavenging? These cards, probably. They're not that hard to find. Daniel will hook you up. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Make sure they can see that off. Yeah, I think I've just barely got it there on the, on the camera. Great. Okay, I believe everybody can see what we're doing here. You're first, homie. We're about to show the game. The game of the game. It's crazy how right back in it I am. So eight cards. Yep. Mm, he's looking for the sleeves. Dan has the sleeves, apparently. So you're in good company. So I've got... And this is a cool thing about the game. So That's cool. Josh says we tried 30, 30 or so different card back designs. The whole company voted on the one we liked best. Very nice. So I've got four rage resources in my opening hand. I think the, about the biggest thing in my hand that I need the threshold for is a three, maybe a four, and there's only one four card. I've got a three in my hand. So I'm just going to hold these three resources and mulligan one of them. Uh, this guy's fine. Oh, man. This is so good. Okay, that's good. So you, you can this mulligan any number this of cards? Good. Yeah. But I've got nothing but dads here. I'm, I'm rolling. Not sure that I have a good first turn though. Maybe I do. Oh, I like this whole hand. Let's do this one. Yeah. So two cards, Mulligan. Draw two more. All right. You ready to do this thing? Yep. Here we go. All right. So at the beginning, you can play a resource or draw a card. I'm going to start by playing a resource. So now I can play one threshold deception cards, one threshold greed cards, and one threshold rage cards. And then I'm going to uh, do some things. Let's go with, I'm gonna pay three to draw a card. Classic. 
Absolute classic, yeah. Uh, now this is where, let's just get this out here because it's so strange. Uh, then pay zero for a gambling den. All right, what to do? Start at your turn, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's numeric cost three or less, each player may draw a card. Otherwise, each player may play a resource. It's going to get crazy. That's quick. a great constructed card. I don't, I don't know what it's doing here, but I let's think just it's kind of fun get too. weird. It pays zero for a tiny star may. There's summoning sickness in the game, as I remember it. Yep. So uh, nothing there. And that will be my turn. Pass it over to you. Okay. Uh, so start of my turn, I will play a resource. I did the same thing. And this is the, the cool thing that I remember, too, is that you can hold your resources, right? Because you might want to spend them on your opponent's turn, and that yep. really puts them on edge. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, I'm going to play an Embittered Cadet. He's a three cost. I have that one Warlord Threshold here. Three strength, two life, three speed. He also provides me one rage. Mm, so he nice. provides an extra threshold. Very nice. Uh, and I will spend my three. All right, done. So then everything untaps, essentially. So my resources yep. come back to me. I have a at the start of turn uh, trigger here. And I have, and at the start of turn, I can uh, draw a card to play a resource. And at the start of turn, I reveal the top card of your deck. So I'm going to start here. It is a two cost, which means that both players may draw a card. Don't mind if I do. And then at the start of turn, I play a resource. I'm now up to two rage, so I've got two threshold going on here. <clears throat> Who would have thought, man? We'd be back into the spoil zone here. Yeah. 2020, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then. <clears throat> Let's go. Uh, I'm going to pay four to play a resource. Yep. Then we've got some interesting math here. So if I attack into you here, yep. uh, the speed's the same. So essentially, you're going to do three to me. I'm going to do one to you. I die. You don't. Waste of time. Yeah, because also damage at the end of each round goes away. That's right. So you don't, you don't store it. But what I can do is I can pay one, put a surplus sol soldier into play. Another character here. If it would be destroyed, I flip it face down under its owner's control instead. As a resource? Yeah. I think that's right. It's yeah, like yeah. always goes down, goes down as a nice. resource, if I remember. Right. And uh, that's it. Yeah, and so the Tiny Sarume is a great little blocker. Just a great little blocker. Just, if you have a blocker, I have to assign my damage at that speed to him. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's really good. All right, so it unattaches. I'll play a resource. And now it's game time. And that's one of the cool things, too, is that, you know, if, if Zach attacks me with 20 damage from a creature, if I can throw a zero, you know, one cost thing in front of it, all of that damage has to go to the blocker and set it to my faction. Uh, so having bodies on the table is very important. It's also worth, worth uh, underscoring that uh, you can do your actions in any order. So after the start of turn triggers, like, I could, I could play something. I could mm -hmm. attack first. Mm -hmm. I could play something, then attack. I could attack and then play something. Attack, play something, attack. Yeah, because a lot of times you want to attack before you're telling your opponent what you're going to be doing. Hmm. I just accelerated past you in terms of resources. And you'll notice that your, your hand essentially just starts to you know, whittle yeah. down. All right, I'm going to play <laughs> Althalamund's Man God, the Iron Fist. Mm. I love him. Um, he costs three. He's a 3-3-3, three, 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 and he's unique, so I can only have one play. He also has an ability called Punch. Pay one, deplete this card, pick a character. X is their strength. Y is twice this card's strength. Mm -hmm. Inflex, inflict X damage to this card and Y damage to that card. Yeah, so you can do six to something and take their strength in return. Yep. Uh, That's a good punch. Then I will attack your faction with the Embittered Cadet for three. Hmm. So I declare my attacker, uh, and we don't even tap them yet because they will tap when they actually assign. Okay. Uh, I don't have any uh, any shenanigans. Okay. So you're allowing? Yes. No now blockers? I want to block. Blocking? Yeah. <laughs> I think I want to block something. Uh, three. Well, you may as well put that surplus soldier into the resource pile, right? Now I could block with both and take you down with me. You've got the you've got the punch ability. I'm going to I do have do the punch that. ability. But now like if I block with both, you can punch one. Yep. And then your embittered cadet doesn't die. 
which is a problem. That would be the plan. If I block with the surplus soldier, you could punch him, and this three damage will go through to my faction. But you got to pay one to do that, although I don't know what you can do with one. You're probably going to do it anyway. <laughs> beautiful game. The game. It's a beautiful game. The game is afoot. It is a beautiful, beautiful game. Oh, sure. Let's block here with a surplus soldier. OK. Um, I'll go ahead and pay one, and I'll punch you with. They tap when declared, and then the defenders tap after combat. That was the biggest deal, right? Because defenders could use their deplete abilities mm, when they're in combat. Yeah. I'll uh, go ahead and use Athelamun's Man God, the Iron Fist ability. Punch, pay one, deplete. I do six to you, you do one to me. Wee. And then now it's unblocked. Yep, I got nothing. So uh, you're taking three to the faction. Three to the faction. Right to the faction. But you'll see, like, you chose to spend money to play a resource, and you got that guy down as a resource. So you are ramping out ahead of me, but you know how I play. Yeah, I sure do. All right, so you're done? Over to yep. me. Over Everything to you. unattaches. So I currently have a three threshold for rage, one and one for deception, and I'm currently at six. This is a magic number in the game because it allows you to draw two cards in a turn if you want. Um, what am I going to do for the turn? Everything in me says keep playing resources, so I'm figuring I might do that. You're the anti-Will Morgan. Yeah, right, I, I really am. Yeah, I'm very, very predictable. Um, I'm going to throw a resource down here. Okay, and you're putting it face down. That's one of the hallmarks of this game. Then, mm, hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to swing for one. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gambling den. Hold on. Three. It started to turn reveal the top card. If it has a mirror cost three or less, each player may draw a card. It does. You're fueling me up. Get that high, women. All right. Well, let's get some. Let's get some nonsense going. I gotta watch out for that uh, Athol mud. <laughs> Whatever that's about. Atha, Lamond, Man so God. I really just need four co like things that are going to do four damage. It would be helpful. I mean, he punches for six, though. To come and get you. And like you'd have to have a card to remove him, right? Because like, you can't attack him. Well, it's fine. if you want to punch me and take, if you can take three or, or more in return, then it would get him off yeah, the board. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, or we could just have you punch, you know, weak stuff. I'm going to start off by paying three. To draw a card. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pay three for my own Athelman Man God, the Iron oh, Fist. Oh no! I punch you, punch we punch, and then we're gonna punch. I think we're gonna punch each other here. If I'm uh, if I'm being honest, I think I should wait. I don't know, but you have no resources right now. It's just pretty tempting. Pretty tempting just to punch you out. I mean, the thing is, like, if you punch me out, like, if I punch you out, it's the same thing. You just don't spend the resource. It's true, yeah. But the main thing is you just don't want me to be able to punch. I don't want you to punch all the great stuff in my hand. Yeah, but it's also like, if I punch your, what am I going to do, punch your Sarume? No, you're not. And if I do, OK, then you can punch my Cadet. That's way worse for me. But what if you have a tactic that's like prevent two damage? That would be a bonus. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's just so many options well, what right if, now. It's what if clean. I have? Well, the thing is, you can respond, right? Yours would yeah. resolve before mine does. Yeah. All right, I'm going to hold there. Mine? Yep. Well, let's ready it all. Let's play another resource. I'm in a measly five. Mm. Embarrassing. Hmm. This will be fun. Uh, I'll attack you with the embittered cadet. Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? That's the question. Hmm. Aaron said, does anyone have a spoils cube card list? I feel like this would make a great cube. Actually, uh, Dan sent a cube to us. So, yeah, someone out there has got it. I'm sure you can find it. I'll take it. OK. Unless you got shenanigans. Mm -hmm. um. hmm. 
We'll get to speed probably, Jeremy, in a second. It's a shame that I have this card under here. It would be very good right now. Very, very good. Game-breakingly good. Let's pay four for a resource. Mm. Then I'll pay two. Actually, no, wait. I'll attack your faction. That means that you're about to play something of that I can punch. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'll take it. Oof. All right, we'll play an Aulus Charger. <laughs> Breaking barriers with ease. And then I'll pass the turn to you. Now, when you pass the turn, can I, does there a pass or play? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. I'm, I'm going to use one to punch. OK. Here, Here you go. And everything comes up. Three, six, seven. Gambling Den. Ooh, a Black Scourge of the Brine. We can both play a resource. My punch is online. <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah, it's really funny because, like, if you go to punch mine, I can then respond by punching a different character. Anything else. And then you would lose both, and I would only lose one. That's. So who's the puncher first? You're you know? not wrong. Four, five. I punch, you punch, we punch. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Is you at least Van asking off topic question. You guys still sell uh, Lord of the Rings compatible tokens? We don't. We discontinued those. Um, the oh, it was a while back, probably a couple years ago. Let's see. Um, let's attack here. One, one, three. The Sarume? Sarume. I don't like it. <laughs> Gamma Den's going going well for us then. <laughs> it's doing something. <laughs> um, okay, let's make you prove it. I'll block with the cadet. Okay. Blocking with the cadet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You pit me. Mm -hmm. What a pleasing sound. We just gracias. Yeah, you, I thought you didn't like that sound. I don't like it when people drink their coffee. Slurp it. The the mouth sounds. Yeah, I don't like mouth sounds more generally. I think yeah, that's a good way to put <laughs> that. Uh, I don't have anything fancy. All right, you take three. You're gone. I have one floating for this round. And hit me a die, just in case it matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's pay one to punch your puncher. I punch, you punch, we punch. I punch, you punch, we punch. All right, I'm punched. And I take three in return, and I'm also punched. And then we'll pay four for Elizabeth. Ooh -wee. Elizabeth, counter imperial countess. That's cool. I like the Warlord style. Yeah. And I'm playing her just because I know that you've got a three strength that keeps punching me. Mm -hmm. So I know that a four life can at least block that. If it's I have another one of those trying to put a uh, Trying to put something in here that can do something. All right. And then I'll pass it to you. Everything ready as damage goes away. Or oh, yeah. I remember, I remember constantly saying, end of your turn, I'll draw a card. Yeah. You remember that? Yep, because you can save resources and then like threaten something. Uh, yeah. Um, let's draw a card instead of the turn. Drawing a card. Ooh. Look at this guy. Wrong. Cards in hand? Two. All right, we're going to play Day of the Tentacle. Mm, that's a good one. Zero cost. Look at an opponent's hand and choose a non-resource card in it. Put it into play under that opponent's control as a face-down resource. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That's fine. Probably that big, strong guy. Ekneret, the expendable one. 
Munchup Piper, how are we able to survive with our storefront closed? Yes, you're right. Our online business is keeping us afloat. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Yep. But that said, uh, the locals have been great. Uh, we have a ton of people that have continued their memberships, even though we're not open, and uh, have subscriptions and are buying stuff. We have Saturday pickup. Uh, but, you know, one of the realities is, like, we, we don't have staff working in the store uh, 60, 70 hours a week at this point. So that's just a... The reality of the Content situation. members too are helping tremendously. The content membership is twenty bucks a month. Uh, it's on our website. Super Seriously. helpful. Un yeah. Unreal. Let's just do stuff like this. Yeah, which has been great. Yeah, super. Uh, fun. All right, let's. How are we able to survive playing dead CCGs that make us no money? It's a good question. Indeed. We're we're here for the ten year sell, uh, Munch Up. I we're often often said that we're home of the long sell here at Covenant. Let's. Yeah, James. Uh, it's just teamcovenant.com is the online storefront. Let's draw a card. We gotta start playing that tempo game. Yeah. What a fool. Because like you're down to one card, so like you're gonna be you're gonna be spending some time drawing. Spend some time. Mm, and I can't attack because you got that four health. You have the perfect stats to, to defeat. I me. sure do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna play Giada the Elegant. Mm. Um, she's three, four cost, three, three, three. Uh, she loses a strength and a life for each token on her. If she would be destroyed, I can put a token on her instead. Yeah. So basically, she gets destroyed, she goes to 2-2, two, two, she gets destroyed, she goes to 1-1, one, one, she gets destroyed, yeah. she's done. So she has to ha get hit three times. And like that art, she's like cor corralling a dragon. Like, that's just... Hey. There are elements where I see it and I'm like, I know why I like this. Yeah. Like, I def the theme particularly, there's a, mom there's a whole lot of moments where it's like, okay, super cool. And this, this was more like this whole style was really feel like more normal and then you occasionally had the pops of like yeah. pop culture and weird stuff. There was definitely pop culture. And this is more like fantasy. It is odd fantasy which I liked a lot. Yeah. You done? Yep. End your turn. I'll pay three. Draw a card. Beginning of the turn. Appreciate it James. Thomas says keep taking my 20 bucks. That's really amazing. Draw a card. Word. The whole team is grateful for that. Beginning of the turn. Flip for uh Gambling dinner. That's right. Reveal the top card if it has numeric cost three or less. Is this how, what's this numeric cost? Zero. Okay. So or, we can no, draw. It's, it's, it's not even a numeric cost. It's probably nothing. So three or less, each player may draw a card. Otherwise, each player may play a resource. So it's not three or less. It's otherwise. Is that what we're saying? That's it. Okay. Untapping. You played a resource. You're just, now you're, in, I know what you're doing. You're doing the classic Steven. <laughs> I have nine resources. Draw, 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 draw. I've got ten resources, buddy. Oop. Okay. Well, let's start dropping some some bodies. Let's see. How do we want to do this? So <laughs> Ryan, this is fantastic. He says, I mean, I bought a ton of tokens and product from them while I'm watching them play these dead dead games. So it seems like it's somewhat working as a business model. I mean that's a crazy thing. So before this all started, we were streaming uh, one day one day a week. Uh, who are you playing there? Black Scourge of the Brine I is coming in. It. One of my absolute favorite characters. Unfortunately, he's only a one threshold because I only have the one banker threshold, so it doesn't get that encroach ability, which is when this gets really good. But still, seven health is But crazy. a fat body and seal is kind of what you're looking for here. But yeah, the uh, we only stream one day a week, and then once isolation hit, we decided to do five days a week. We knew for us and for everyone watching, particularly during the most intense isolation period, it would it would be kind of dev you know it's devastating to not have your local community and your local store to be a part of. So we wanted to kind of do that as best we could online. But the reaction so far has been incredible, so uh, we'll see what the future holds. Um, and then uh, I, I could swing with Elizabeth here, but really nothing gets accomplished except for shenanigans that you might have. I can I also like block with both characters. You can do that, yep. And then like technically then I you could get rid of this character, but then she wouldn't go anywhere, and then you would be off the table. And I don't like that trade at all. So I'm going to hold there. Pass right. it over to you. Uh, you got three resources open. We all know what that's for. It's amazing how you sink back into this just natural. Just, just it's like you got to in with three because you got to draw. Draw a card. Says you. Hmm. Evan, yeah, content marketing for sure is where it's at. You know why? I mean, I'll give you. I'll give you all the goods. It's all all marketing wisdom. Hit me. Come at you. You right are now. marketing director. Here's the thing. Yeah, the games. All these kinds of games. There's no way to find the players of these games in any kind of a reasonable way to like target. You know, it'd be one thing if we sell socks. We talk about this all the time. The, the market for socks is unbelievable. So I would target, you know, let's say I'm making uh, sports socks. I would target B 
people who like sports, athletic, whatever, focus groups, interest groups, et cetera, show them Facebook ads, convince them why my socks are the best, and be done with it. Maybe the simplest example, my brother has a wedding business. Yeah. And so it's like literally the first thing anyone does when they get engaged is they change their status on Facebook, yeah. at least in the 25 to 50-year-old range. Yeah. And so like you can literally run ads to people who are engaged. Right. And so he can just show his videos that he does to engage people. Uh, running, but, running an ad to find an Arkham player who wants a subscription because they already have all of the products and want to stay current with the new ones, it ain't going to happen. So well, you gotta, you got to make stuff good enough that people come find you. And, and just, just personally, it's like I hate ads. Mm-hmm. So like, just provide value. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's right. there's marketing one one. Provide value, the rest will follow. That's right. Also, don't give up. You like how you can't uh, get through it all. Shh. <laughs> 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 oh, it's funny. You can attack my gambling den if you'd like. Nope. Don't. <laughs> Wouldn't. I love this game. Oh my gosh. Why we have to bring this system back. Does Arkham Timmon still just own the rights to the system? They own everything. We've told we've been told that you can't really copyright or trademark a system, right? You can't. Oh, they are, it wouldn't do anything in the first place. Andrew Carter, that's amazing. He, listen to this. This is a great story. Uh, Andrew said, they got me to subscribe for Marvel Champions, and once I care more about Arkham, I'll sub to that. More worried about Lord of the Rings at the moment. And I used to be super critical of TC. They are good guys, and they won me over. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's awesome, Andrew. Thank you. Well, thanks for giving I, us a chance long I, enough to... I'm, I'm not sure if I want to ask, but, <laughs> I mean, I'm, cu I'm curious what, where the criticality comes Who from. Who are these yahoos? I, I definitely get, like, I feel like we, we are very different. Um, and... and we're also, we're a very unique bunch. Well, here, here's, I'll tell you exactly why. I've, I've, I've looked into this as your marketing director. I've looked into yeah, this. Great, I'm glad to hear that. I think the real question you have to ask of a business like ours is, are they finding products and games and interested in them and f really think that they're awesome and then they decide to sell them because of that? Or are they deciding to sell them to make money and then trying to convince other people how awesome they are? It's yeah. basically which one comes first in that equation and... Uh, to some people, they would look at us and say, they're just trying to sell product, and so they're going to say it's all good, and they love it, and whatnot. And then, then we have to prove to them, no, we love it, we care about the industry, et cetera, enough that we want to have the best products, and that's why we're selling a game like Flesh and Blood or a game like Sky Terror to you. Yeah. So that's uh, basically the idea. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's just a... There, there could be any number of reasons, I guess. Like, people just personally not like us, too. But he, obviously, Andrew doesn't, so that's great. James said we could uh, buy it from Arkane Tinman. Well, you just never know. That'd be a wild world. I never, never thought that would happen. All right, I have to make some choices. This is, it's money moves time. Yeah. Uh, Munchop asking if we ever get tired of, do you get tired streaming so much? We get tired, yeah. Mm, let's do this. I will play a nefarious horror. Um, now we're gonna see a keyword we haven't seen before. It's covert. So basically, if you're, oh, get out you're, of here you're attacking with covert, covert. It's like I gotta stealth. go dig for removal yeah, now. It's like, <laughs> it's like stealth. So like, if I attack with covert, I can choose a character that can't block it. Or is it nothing can block it? No, nothing can block it unless it's covert. Now, there's one weird rule, and it's like, I think covert things can attack with non-covert things. And, and the they party's become not covert. covert. Yeah. Uh, but only covert parties can block covert parties. All right, great. We so I've it. got one turn to figure that one out. So you better get on it. Um, then I'll go ahead and pay one for a Golemizer. I'm going to attach it here. So at the end of each of my turns, it gets a token. You get minus one speed for each token. If you're at zero speed, you get removed from the game. Get out of here. End of my turn. You're minus one speed. Let's play the game. Let's go. In your turn, pay three to draw. The end of the turn, play a resource. Van, I appreciate seeing that. Uh, so uh, just, actually, beginning of the turn, gambling done. Saying uh, he loves that we're about the game and the game industry, trusts our opinions, and appreciates our passion. We're happy to have you, man. Uh, Vigilant Raider revealed on the top for gambling done, so we can both play a resource. Mm. I'm doing it. And then uh, start of my turn. This is good to know. Kai says the podcast like is what made me go really deep into two thing. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kind of see it as like the a little bit behind the scenes, like. People really have to want our content to be listened to the podcast. Is the, the expectation so kind of the insider track? Yeah. 
Okay, money in the bank. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Ryan says, I've seen some of the criticalness of you guys online. A lot of it has to do with the perspective that you guys are trying to kill the local game store with your online stuff. <laughs> and he says, which isn't the case. Yeah, I mean, it's the opposite, actually. Uh, our, our entire funny. reason for existing is, is to attempt to perfect uh, the place in which we play. We have a local store in Tulsa for that reason. Um, and that's going to be more and more of what we do. But ultimately, there are a lot of games and a lot of people that don't have local stores, um, that, or at least don't have local stores for the, the things they care about and what they want to do. So online, that's really what we're trying to do, is be the local store for people that don't have one until maybe someday they have one. Maybe someday. You maybe got, us. You've got no cards in here, huh? None. But Ooh. I can draw one. Here we go. Let's swing a blaster to the rhyme. Four coming in at your faction. With the, the big cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take four. Okay. And then... The name is afoot. Let's get into some of the uh, more classic spoils content. The aroused stiff bone. <laughs> Hold your laughter, please. Sorry, I couldn't. Everybody. No schoolhouse giggles here, okay? Uh, so it costs me X, where X is 7 minus the number of rage resources I control. I currently control 4, so it costs me 3. So I'm going to pay 3 for it. Then I'll pay 5 for a Vigilant Raider. And I'm well, going to hold 3. Dude, Vigilant Raider, I remember him being awesome. Yeah, pay 2 pump, man. Woo! Yeah, he's just a monster. Because once you declare no blockers, I can just go pump, pump, it. pump. Well, the game is set. Uh, and then I'll keep Elizabeth around in case I want to put something on the top. And that's it. Hmm. Yeah, Andrew, we, we talked about it early on in the stream. If you uh, end up going back there, um, it, it, it had a lot of issues that were not necessarily related to the game itself. A lot of outside the game kind of stuff was going on. Andrew, your turn on the draw card. Mm -hmm. Let's draw the turn. Look at that resource. Pool. Kaya, that's awesome. My local stores have toxic environments where I'm the only woman who wants to play games, and so supporting TC definitely seems like a better option than giving them money. Well, we're happy to have you. That's awesome, Kaya. Thank you. you you've, I see you in the chat all the time. I've seen you comments all the time. It's just great to have you around, have you as a part of what we're doing. All right, you ready? Yeah. I'll play a tiny Sarume. Sarume. Let's get some fighting. This board's getting too big. I'm getting uncomfortable. Don't like big boards. Cannot lie. <laughs> uh, nefarious Horror is covert. I'm going to attack your faction. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go ahead and draw. Let's just see what happens here. OK. Uh, I'm going to take two. No blockers, really. Take two. Can't block. Uh, let's go ahead and draw one card. Let's see what my options are. Hmm. Really? Ryan Roper, dude, this is it. I mean, this is what we're all about. He says, I love supporting my LGS, but a lot of the ones in town don't want to support me or the games I want to play. There's only one store in town that regularly runs the games I like, and it's closing now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's a huge, huge... It's on, the, we, we it's played on the brand sheet. Growing up, right? I mean, that's the games we played. Like, mm -hmm. this was, was a game that a lot of stores didn't care about. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play a minion of Thabash. He's also got covert. Provides. Man, a, I see what you're doing thing. here. Yeah. Just sneaking him. Through. All right, so you're just a sneaky guy now. Uh, and then, and I played this this round, so that's technically sick. <laughs> Summoning sick. Mm -hmm. And I'll pass three open. Okay. Let's play the game. Start of the turn. I feel like we didn't skip a beat, Stephen. A decade later. Off. <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven resources. I can pile them. You know, most people would do it very nicely. Did you answer AP's question about champions? Uh, no, so I didn't. Get, getting champions for my son for his birthday and want to get an extra hero villain pack as a surprise, what would you suggest? My favorite, I, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Game so Green Goblin, what's that mean? We can play a resource. All right, doing it. Uh, Green Goblin, it comes with two scenarios, so that's pretty fun. Wrecking Crew is really interesting as well, but I, I definitely am a huge Green Goblin fan. Start of the turn, I'll draw. That's right. If you're just getting the core set, also, if you, any of those heroes are your favorite, Captain America is fantastic. Thor is super fun. Black Widow is awesome. Doctor Strange is crazy. Pay four, play resource. Pay three to draw. 
He's ramped. Now you're just top decking. And three to draw. The most terrifying thing in sealed and draft is when you're top decking, and it's like, it's you each have like five life. Mm -hmm. The board's clear. You just, yeah. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do here. Oh, oh I should have held that for the raider, honestly. All right, well, let's see if we can get some stuff going here. Um, the vigilant raider. Mm-hmm. He's the boo guy. Oh, yeah, this has two tokens on it, by the way. Mm hmm. She's got one turn left. <laughs> hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let's swing for four. William, I'm going to come back to that comment in a minute. This is right. So many comments. And Ken, if you're a subscriber, you should always expect to, in the U.S. to get stuff around the day of release. So if you're in the U.S., that should be tomorrow. Um, and it, it'll probably be tomorrow or maybe Saturday. That's like 99.9% .9 of cases. Let's do... Let's swing for four. Straight With up. With the old stiff bone? Mm-hmm. 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 Block with the sarume. Eat it. All right, so the way this would work, we're both threes, so I'd assign one, you'd assign, you're you attacking, you'd assign yep. four, I'd assign one, and then my character would go away. Technically, he's got one floating for the turn, right? Yeah. yeah. So like you had a way to ready him, or had a card effect that did damage, yeah. Uh, William saying, did Zach say Thor was fun? Yes, I love Thor. The problem is, when you're playing heroic three, uh, Thor's not good enough. So I, I love playing with the, like, less crazy, insane heroes against some of those villains. It's just a matter of scale. When you're on like Rhino Heroic 3, I don't think Thor is the, the ticket. Swing for four. You got some beat sticks, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just coming in with the with the goods. I'm taking some damage. Let's draw a card. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree, Christopher. I wish someone would, would resurrect this game too. Honestly, I think it just needs a re a rebrand. Don't call it the spoils. Redo it. Uh, yeah. Keep the system and the mechanics. Maybe even keep some of the themes. I, I would tone it down. I, I think you could keep 70%. It really need, What it needs is a really... And I know a lot of people love the, the theme of the spoils, but I think you could really find a theme that would work, a lot of themes that would work with this kind of a game. Um, I would like to see just a more, like, a less outrageous... Because uh, I know that all the spoils and the Iridia stuff was very well developed. Yeah. I would love to see the actual like development of that universe uh, and really diving into it rather than kind of looking at you know pop culture as a whole and trying to work it into the cards. Yeah. But uh, all that's right. just me. I'm an old. You got a four swinging in. Let's. Uh... Let's let's take it. Okay. Plus eight. Hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. And then. Mm -hmm. Well, Elizabeth, you're going to die anyway. At the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. So you can still block with her. I can still block with her. Okay, I'll, I'll leave things as they are. Okay, end of the round? End of the round. I'm just going to start doing this. This is my resource stack. Mm -hmm. Stack it up. Uh, I'll draw a card. I didn't know that, Ken. He said they're designing Volition. It's loosely based on spoils mechanics. Hmm. Different distribution model, though. Is that the one that's, like, blockchained? I think I saw that. Man, Ken, I see you posting about chains. <laughs> Not blockchain, yeah. It's just like, I, uh, I, I know I could either. understand it. If we're ever in the same place, I'm going to you know, post Corona. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. All right. I will... Four to four. Uh, let's send a two covert at you. You got me. Two more. You got me. That's four. You're down to ten. Mm-hmm. What's been happening over there? I've been taking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta gotta mm -hmm. find that. I uh, gotta find that removal. Let's uh, draw a card or a hamster. <laughs> when you say hamster, all I can think <laughs> about is Haster from uh, Arkham. Let's uh, pay one 
for a surplus soldier. Yeah, I love that guy. If he be destroyed, he flips down as a resource instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will pass the turn to you. Okay. So this this is a common uh, theme, which is I have two of these covert characters out, the Nefarious Horror and the Minion of Thabash. And Steven has to answer it. Um, because if he doesn't, it's just going to keep going on. Now, you have the Radiant. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, what's his Vigilant face? Vigilant Radiant. Radiar. Did you untap those guys? Oh, sorry, sorry. Out of here. I'm not going to block with them. They're, <laughs> they're my engine. <laughs> uh now, I don't think, so there's this ability, this uh, keep them coming ability, where you pay three, and if something would be destroyed, you put it on the top of the deck instead. I don't think I have a framework to respond to this with that ability. I think that's an important piece of like the passive triggers versus the active ones. Mm. So I don't think I can do that. Ken would know. So it's going to go to three. I don't know. And if, if you can, then sure, you could pay three and put it on top, but... All right, everything untaps at the end of your turn, or rather than before that happens, in your turn, I'll pay three to draw. Then everything untaps. I get my resources. Packets of three. Then I Evan, gamble again. Ken said you can't respond to triggers. Okay. Uh, Evan, now you could have, you know she's going to get destroyed, right? Mm-hmm. So she has the ability you can pay three if they'd be destroyed this round. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we both draw a card. Courtesy right. of the gambling. Thank thing. you. And then start of the turn. Evan says, I'm lucky. This is Play this happens. I'm lucky to have a really good FLGS, but a lot of others I've visited will absolutely not stock anything that isn't the big three. Totally understand why they don't do that. And I it's great that you have a good local store. Like it's definitely not something that we <laughs> aren't promoting or don't want. I know a lot of great uh, local store owners that I, I hope uh, continue to do very well. All right, let's swing for. We could have weird speed stuff. You got three cards? Three cards. Six resources. Ba ba boom. Let's swing for four with the Vigilant Raider. Put it all on the line. We're going to block with the Surplus Soldier and Giada the Elegant. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. So now we get a pass or plays. Mm-hmm. And you get the first one. I do. What's really amazing, this is, this is actually the proof in the pudding for this game. 14 years old right now, right? Yeah. Think about any other game we played from the 2000s. The cleanliness and ease with which we learned this, the fact that it's one plate page rule book with as much interaction and like th- the pure cleanliness of this game. It's so good. Is actually truly unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's it is I agree. Unfortunate uh pay three to draw. that it didn't go better. This game is fantastic. You got a response? I drew. Do you have anything? That's all resources. Yeah. I'm going to keep Sweet doing it. Sweet mother of God. Now you're good. I, yeah, I have three. an eventual response if I need to. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. I'm going to pay three more. Very nice. Okay. Um, all right. I have no more uh, responses here. So you're assigning four first. I'm assigning four first. It's all you. Uh, one and three. Okay. I'll assign four there. You did it. Uh, all right, so this guy gets destroyed. He goes face down as a resource. She gets destroyed. She gets a token. So now she's a 2-2-2, two, 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 mm-hmm. and she's depleted. Okay. Let's do pay one for a Dwarvish Grimalkin. Uh, get that out there. I think people would be surprised to know how common this is. Blake says, I've never played at a local game store. As I've gotten into these games, it's always been something I just casually do with a couple of friends at home. For some reason, I feel uncomfortable going into a store alone. I, I, there's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of stores that wouldn't be super comfortable for someone totally new. That was something that we were trying to address with our store. And even then, it's going into an unknown social environment by yourself. Like that, That's very intimidating. Swing for four. All right. All right. Hmm. 
<laughs> the game is afoot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I'll take it. Okay. One. Three more. Down to 12. 12 to 10. Pay one. Put a hidden dagger here. Plus oh, one strength. Goodness, I love hidden dagger. Yeah, it's super good. And then uh, let's swing for five. You're all in. I'm all in. You better have something. Oh, you have a blocker here. Mm-hmm. Let me read it. You only have one banker? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I will not block. All right, take five. Whew, seven to ten. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Are you done? No. Okay, go ahead. No. No. Let's... Yeah, I'm going to hold there. I am done, actually. I'm going to pay four. Play a resource. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm will pay four for encumber. I'll put that back in your hand. The Grimlkin? Yep. Pay four encumber. Uh, pick a lo character location. Put the character location in its owner's hand. Boom. Beautiful encumber. Yeah. I was saving it for old big big bones there, but you attacked. So <laughs> now I have a clear path. <laughs> With 12 resources, let's draw a card. All right, let's start where all good things start. Blazing Shriever, cost three. I can pay two and destroy it. If I do, it'll do one damage to something for every Warlord resource I control. So one, two, That's three, four, good. five, six, seven, eight. Yo. So eight damage hit, <laughs> ready to rumble. Uh, so you don't control more characters than me. I'll swing for two, Covert. Take it. Two, Covert. Play some acidic phlegm, one to everything. Ah! This one's gone. Yeah. Good, good play. Um, See you, Kaya. Let's go three with the cadet. Good. Let's go two with the Giada. Got it. Yeah, got it. Got it. Uh, I'll pay three to draw. Oof. I gotta save two for my buddy. Uh, let's pay two. The frenzied. Yeah. When it inflicts damage, uh, increase the amount by two. Nice. Let's just do this before it gets out of hand. <laughs> uh, oh no, I can save it because I can always react and resolve first before you could do anything. Unless I resolve in between what you're trying to do with whatever you're trying to kill and. Do something like can't be damaged, those kinds of things, you know? Yeah. All right, I will pass to you. All right, passing to me. We're down to it. Seven to three. Everything's going to ready. Um, I'm going to start with the gambler's trigger. It's a cashier's window. Each draw a card. Each draw a card. It's really crazy because, like, I feel like this experience start we're having, the turn, draw this was us opening four packs and playing. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think this is what we, this last week on the podcast, we talked about the collectible model in general. And I think this is the experience. This is the game we really fell in love with Sealed at, right? We did Sealed back in the day. We just couldn't afford to do it often because we were kids. Yeah. Um, and, like, I think once you understand this experience, it, it, it's it, so good. It's a different, like, buying booster packs is a very different vibe. All right, let's pay three to see if we can find uh, an answer here. Oh, nice. Uh, Nathan, we haven't seen that yet. He said Anymore. they announced a new scenario pack for champions. I heard it's that. Kang the Conqueror. Mm. Huh. That's an interesting card. All right. So how many, how much more? I don't think there's any outs here. I'll try to find one more. Digging. And he was digging. <laughs> hmm. 
Pepe one for the old Grimalkin, Dwarvish mm -hmm. Grimalkin. Six, seven. So I probably make you prove it, right? You gotta blow up the Shriver. I've got one blocker you can just ping on. Ping on, little doggy. The worst thing in the world would be if I have the Blazing Shriver going in my turn, because it could attack and then go boom. And then go boom. <laughs> I love the Blazing Shriver. Yeah, that's a problem. Those suicide Dragons are the bomb. <laughs> Deadly Striker, too. Get out of here. <laughs> There may there may be something I can do here. And you can do enough damage to kill the black scourge, right? Yeah. Doing eight right now. Yeah, Ken, the the sealed environment in this game is really just unmatched. It, we were obsessive over it. And back in the day we were selling singles, so like we had to open all the product anyway. So it's like open a bunch of prat packs, play a sealed round, unsleeve it, open all the packs, play a sealed round, and go. 100%. All right, let's see. So you've got four or five things you can attack with. I've got three things I can block with. There's no way that math is going to be good for me. <laughs> that is some bad <laughs> math now. Uh, um, Mutton Chop says uh, he has a question. I put my subscription in for Keyforge on the 2nd of July. Will I get the new set coming out tomorrow? Uh, so we usually charge for that about two weeks in advance. And if you miss that, uh, you, won't, it, it, you won't get it. But you can always tell. You can go on the account page on the website. Log in. It should be super simple. And any charges you've been charged for, you should have already been charged. So it should be on there. You should have received an email about it and whatnot. Um, and short of that, like if you still want to get the stuff you, on the website, you should be able to hop on the wait list for that product. And literally, like today or tomorrow, it should be able, you should be able to order it, and then we can basically do immediate fulfillment for shipping. Okay. What do you do here? Lose. Lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing to do. So I can at least spook you. You make it as close as you can get it. Uh, let's swing for four. Mm -hmm. I only need to do three. Walk here. All right, done. Resolve. Mm -mm -mm. We were swinging. Mm -hmm. You know. It's close. It's actually closer than I think it is. Um, I'll go ahead. You're kind of like a, a body short. And I can, I can take the two. All right, let's just do it. Let's just do it like this. Let's um, pay four mm. for an unscrupulous attendant. Anything that blocks getting one life. And then I'll pass it over to you. OK. I'll draw a card at the end of your turn. Start of my turn, I'll draw a card. Boom. Unscrupulous, and I've guarded this door my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very funny game. Uh, all right. Well, while this is true, <laughs> while you don't control more characters than me, I'll attack here for two. You know what? Before I do that, let's back this up. I'm going to play uh, Kausla. Hmm, here we go. <laughs> uh, I can remove any number of tactics from my disc. It says choose a number for X greater than zero. Remove that many tactics from my discard pile from the game. I have two. To get rid of uh, health or something? No. Uh, then I can search my deck for a tactic with a numeric cost less than that number, reveal it and put it in my hand. One cost or less? Two. I had two. Then it say less than that number? Or equal X, to X or less. less than. X okay. or less. Two bad. or less, yeah. Reading is not my strong suit. 
<laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have plenty of resources, but it, it could be like a new one damage or like a some kind of kill effect. All right. Um, so I'll swing for two covert. Mm, you got it. You have no money, so you're just you got problems in different area codes. <laughs> I got problems. Just don't remove anything, would you? Uh, we'll attack with the cadet. Mm-hmm. It is goodly close. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, at any point, if I block with one thing, you blow up the Shriever and uh, the game is over. That's right. So I got to block with two things. Yep. That's and then, a problem. Then I Shriever the other thing. Yeah, I know. It's so it's too bad. <laughs> block there, Grimalkin. So, Cat Sam, what killed the spoils originally? Uh, ultimately, some investors pulling out. Uh, they didn't get to pay the prize money to people that didn't want it. People stopped buying the game. It was a you know a whole cycle of doom. You can go back. It's, it's, well, this stream goes up. We cover that whole thing at the start. All right. So what are you blocking with? This. By itself? Yep. OK. <laughs> Blazing Shriever in flame. Pay two. Do a whole bunch of damage to it. You did it. Nothing. Dead. You got me. All right. You got me. Had that strangulate, but it just wasn't enough. Just not enough. This game is so good. It, it truly, the system is, is just something else. Um, I'm going to put all my resources back, and I'm going to crack more packs. Yeah, let's do some, new, do some new pools. Get to actually look at. I remember, I think, um, so I had, I had something great that could have been going on. And these are the fun little sealed combos. Yeah, you start, when a new set comes out, we would just basically jam boxes of sealed open over and over. And then you start figuring out, like, oh my goodness, these three cards together are crazy. So I put Melty Cheese under, and the next turn I drew the Puncher. But you put that on the Punch guy, he gains two life, and he can't attack. And just every turn you punch, and he can take five damage. And so you can punch five strength stuff, or four strength stuff With right the off the board. Cheese. Which is super nice, For right? Days. That would have been a devastating sealed combo. OK, here's all my Rage. Greed. Deception. It is essentially the, the Deadly Sins, right? It is. There's only five of them, but you get the idea. All right, one down. Shall we? We shall. Let's crack some more packs. We had six each, right? So that's a perfect one box of Seed Saga. It's kind of like the 24-pack uh, box of uh, Flesh and Blood we've been doing. Hey, anybody's interested in spoils, you really should check out Flesh and Blood. It's, it's got the goods. It's a, it's a game from a publisher in New totally Zealand different. called Legend Story Studios. And part of why we wanted to throw back the spoils this week was just to be able to compare it. Uh, but it has similar, like, it's very cleanly designed, and it's also doing something that I haven't really seen a game do. Uh, so definitely cool. A lot less uh, satire, but it's, it's a great, great little game. Mm. All of these cards. All of them, man. Man, the packaging on these, this is not how the old packs were. The first set was impossible, but these packs are like, oh, dude, this is cool. I got an ultra rare. What does the that mean? The foil can be an ultra rare in the back sometimes. This is like the full border. Oh my gosh, look at it. Worm. Put it out. Look at that, it's great. It's beautiful. I love the witty worm too. He was so good and constructed as I remember it. <laughs> yeah, he's hilarious. Didn't he go get a resource or something? Well, he's in your hand. You can reveal this card as you're playing a resource. If you do, you may deploy this card for one. Yeah. When this card enters play, you may put a resource you control into its owner's hand. If you do, you may play a resource. Yeah. So you basically flip those and cards. And just the fact you can play them for one. Just like, well, that's good. Ooh, I got the arrogance as well. Ooh, you yeah. remember Seraphim Magic? Yes. Classic card. Also, Redonculus. Yeah. Love seeing Redonculus. Nathan, yeah, Flesh and Blood as early as tomorrow on those. Um, it's actually a really good problem that's run into it. it a lot of folks are buying in, um, and not just from us, so that's a, a good sign. Uh, but we may or may not have them in Friday. If not Friday, it'll be Monday. Did you sell that? Uh, did you sell the legendary to buy more bundles? <laughs> That's what Probably. Nathan was thinking about doing, right? Ultra rare back to back. Are you kidding Peculate. me? Peculate. Zero cost. Pick a Are character, you item, or location me? in an opponent's discard pile. Pay X. Rex is a numeric cost. Put it in a planner of your control. Woo. 
This really does bring back memories. Me opening the ultra rares? Mm-hmm. I remember that uh, ultra rare brain bath that I was super pumped to finally get. Uh, and then there was uh, the, there's a Shriver that's ultra rare that I was also super excited to get. Oh, right. I remember that. Three card. ultra rares in a Are row. Are you kidding me? Are they just on the bottom? Maybe. Mysterious Invasion. Look at this. What is happening? Oh, is that plus, real? I got one of my favorite cards ever. Adriel, Defender of Mardu. Oh, he was busted, right? Two uh, costs for a 3-3. When battle damage is inflicted, this card while blocking, reduce it to zero. He can just block forever. It's There's ridiculous. also Gideon. You remember Gideon? I remember Gideon. I Do you want, have Gideon too? No, I, I don't okay. think so. Not Goodness yet. gracious. But I did get Adriel. Adriel and Gideon were the bombs back in the day. Too easy. Nathan says, yep, going on eBay tonight. SoCat saying Dorinthia seems more powerful than all the other heroes. Actually, uh, Bravo is the one that's won the most tournaments so far. Bravo. Karmic Cake. I remember that one. That's the resource search. Ooh, Dude, I love Karmic I think, Cake. I think all the ultra rares were together. Look at this. Mutineer's Hiatus, ultra rare. So you're going to play all the ultra rares, and I they're get nothing? They're different. They're different colors. That's impossible <laughs> to do. Literally. <laughs> Yeah, Ken says, at least all Zach's bombs are different trades. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Although, look, these are all both ones. So I can play both of those. Those are beautiful cards, man. Yeah, that's, I, I haven't seen that that style of card. Yeah, they're all, literally. They are all in the bottom. Miraculous right? Regeneration, ultra rare. Jeez. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I remember so many of these cards that I wanted to... Uh, that I wanted to use and build a constructed deck around that I never never got around to. You literally all six? Fired hand. I wonder if that's on purpose. I don't know. Is that normal? Are they all different? No, they're not all different. Ken says, Grr, printing company makes Ken sad. <laughs> Dan S says, looks like I sent you guys a great box. Is that not normal? Is that normal to get a quarter of your box just super rares? Weird. I like it. All right, now we're going with a different strategy. You have a fan, by the way. Michael says, does anyone root for Steven or Zach when they play Heads Up? I find myself rooting for Steven. I'm not sure why. I think we kind of represent different, uh, slightly different different uh, personas, but as if like all those personas could just get along and not make the games unfun. Not like complete opposite personas, but it's compatible personas. How about that? Compatible personas. I find myself rooting for me. <laughs> that, that's the kind of persona you are. <laughs> <laughs> Never denied it. Never denied it. Cryptic, boodling, unscrupulous, malicious, strangulate, mathematize, alluring. It's really wild revisiting this game. It's like I never left, yeah. honestly. It's like it's, I never there, left. There are definitely some cobwebs happening. But yeah. it's lighter than expected. Like when I used to be better at it? Yeah. That's how it, that is a, uh, oh, the obtuse pipe smoker. I do remember that guy. That was one of the bombs early on in the in the draft and sealed yeah. world. That art. You remember the burly assail assailment? Mm hmm Do you remember the booty liquor? Yep. <laughs> yep. It's a classic rogue card. Yeah. I just want deadly strikers. I have seen. I don't even know if they're in here. I don't think they are. They weren't in they're, seeds. They're for too sure. good. So I'm going to go a different route this time, and I'm going to start by looking for all of my removal. That, which is a classic. There's like five things I remember looking. It was creature count, removal, uh, and then there was one other thing. Like just bombs, probably. It was bombs. Yeah, it's like we call them fat fatties. You remember the banner of avarice. Never seen I got a banner before. of betrayal. They provide a. I had one last time. You just I, put it in a play, right? And yep. it just stays there it's forever. It just hangs out. Okay, who's got removal for me? That dragon is Moxless. His prize for winning worlds. Oh, cool. Nice. This dragon? The Draconia Slither form? <laughs> uh, bread. That's right. Remember Bread, the acronym? Yep. What was it for? Was it. Lewd? No, 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 it's for what you, how you uh, oh, pick. Bombs, removal, e effort, effects. 
bomb removal evasion aggro duds. <laughs> Is that I like... don't know. That's the exact kind of thing Tim would remember. Yeah. <laughs> no offense. No offense. <laughs> and that's exactly what I would say. We're just all characters in the story. I do like this. This is fun. Oh, the gout. Gout flame. Uh, let's see. Nathan, no, I'm not going to take it off your hands. Uh, but I'm excited to see you do well with it. Uh, Kevin's saying, watching me learn Arkham has been amazing. It's been super cool for me. I, that game's fantastic. Hmm. <laughs> Yep, there's some removal. Ah, uh, they replaced the art on some of these cards. Like this uh, wonton wizard is very different art. Oh, it is. That looks great. It looks fantastic. It's actually really good. That's, that's where, because like the original was very, I think, if I remember, even, I, I just realized this is slightly sexual. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more, and this is uh, more just epic, which I think is uh, where I would go with it if I was going. Jeremy, Flesh and Blood, the TCG for refined individuals. That, I, I don't disagree with that. Okay. Games four. It's just a standard card. Yeah, see, now it's a lot harder because I'm having to actually look. Please, this card draw. Oh my gosh, this is a great card. Defender's deck. Okay, so that's fine. It's a great card. All right, so really, I'm looking at where is... That's hilarious. Got three removal and one kind of kind of bomb card in, in Banker. Full Heidi Desperado, not exactly bomb, but it's possible that you could really build that up to something that's very annoying for your opponent. Okay, look at their opponent's hand, nope. Picking on discards. Nope. Okay, flip this card. Man, Otter Floss is so good. Uh, yeah, it is. I have one of those right now. Speed. Mm. Mm. Yes. Very good. Yes. Uh, Palpster saying, is Flesh and Blood just not published in Europe? Can't find it anywhere. Yeah, they don't have distribution over there yet, right now. They're just starting out. So they started in New Zealand and Australia and really did a great job there. Now they're moving to the U.S. And then EU and U.K. is right behind, apparently. Okay. What's the void? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, that counts. Draw a card, reveal. If you do, put it in the void. Put the remaining cards on the top of your What's deck. What's the card? Uh, like Gilda, Mother of Gideon. Ooh. What's the What's the void? Is that probably like an out of play area or something? I don't know. Void is removed from game. Okay. Okay, I get you. Makes sense. Done. Yep. Okay. So four removal cards in the obsession pool. Kind of one one bomby there. Very very loose bomb. Uh. Yeah. Not really. Not really. Not really. I would say vigilant raider is notable. That's very much notable. Colossal yeah, it's, Flattener. It's Remember Colossal Flattener? How many games are won by this card? Absolutely. Colossally. Yeah, I'm remembering now. <laughs> I remember. It's hitting on a new level. I'm just sorting my threshold first. Oh, man. Remember the Robustical Badass? Oh, yeah. Remember that burn deck with splatter guns and you just... Mm. Sure enough. Those are some good Dude, memories. Dude, look at this. This is the Moxless card, the Gout Flame. Talonclaw. D-I-A-G-F, in parentheses, die in a Godzilla fire. <laughs> That's a great card. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing. 
What was that uh, worm, worm whatever that we tried to build a deck around or we did build a deck around? The big worm guy, W-Y-R-M something, worm tongue or worm? You're not, you're not there at all. Nope. Uh, I'm trying, though. Well, it was an old, it was a big character that had an interesting effect. Is that, yeah, Bryce, you got it on the screen. Who is that guy? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah hold on, let me slide over. Wormfang. Yeah, 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 Wormfang. Death Skull. Wormfang, yeah. Death Skull. Wormfang, Wormfang, Death Skull, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. That's that's a good good play there, Bryce. Bryce at home, popping those cards in. Five, okay. Well, I hate to do it, but I feel like I'm going uh, Heavy Warlord again. Yeah, they're all good. Yeah. That's the problem. I remember feeling that way a lot, actually. Especially in Seed, I think. They had a lot of removal and big characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Play this. Okay. No. Yeah, I see. Well, this card is a realist card. We want just card character, big character. Okay, reveal it, pay one, discard a card, pick a character. Oh, right on, yeah, yeah, because you can do that over and over and over. That's right, Fired Hand. I remember Fired Hand. You remember Fired Hand? I remember Fired Hand. Oh, yeah. Dude, some of these cards. Two, three, four, five. This, my Warlord pool is redonkulous. <laughs> Muscle Tribe, man, Muscle Tribe of Danger and Excellence. That was a good one. You remember Rusty Pickaxe? Uh huh. The old Swollen Ostrich. Mm hmm. That's a good one. Do you remember Narrow Passage? I remember it being busted. Was it like only one you character can attack, can attack once each turn? Yeah. That's good. Research intern, that was the like not busted version of the research guy, assistant. senior research senior assistant. Research assistant. <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot about that. That was everywhere. The, the toolbox elf? Oh, of course. And the beefy elf? Toolbox elf into the big hammer, whatever Crack that thing hammer. was. Crack hammer? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. What's the aggro keyword? No idea. Maybe it has to be the first thing you do on a turn. Is it in here? Aggro, no. Is this an old rule bug, probably, yeah? Aggro, nope, don't know. Can you probably know that, yeah? Okay. Drivey car, oh yeah, I love that drivey car. Oh my god, and the micro jigs. Mm -hmm. Ken says it can't attack immediately. Oh cool, no summoning sickness, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this make this all makes sense. Okay, so based on removal, if I'm being honest, I've got four here. I've got a lot in Warlord. And just some big just big bodies here. I may actually get lucky and not need not need a bunch of re I might do a two into one like that's possible just run two factions here I think I I really need to play rogue again so now I've got this it's just playing your control if you put put this card into play under your control as a face down resource yep okay Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Bradley Salem is good. Um, please, good, good. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's, maybe this is right. Maybe I'm supposed to go all into uh, elitism. There's three. 
Yeah, so I'm just gonna look at, I've got a lot of cards that have like the, um, based on the number of elitism resources you have, things can go well for you. Mm -hmm. So you want heavy elitism? I might. Got that arrogance. I might, yeah, arrogance is in here. Man, it's just not easy. It's just not easy, man. Okay, what about these guys? I don't know. It's all so good. Ah! I want to. I'm trying to fight my warlord instincts here. But I've got Adriel as well. How do you not run Adriel and sealed? I mean, yeah, that's like a defining so card. So good. Devastatingly good. Two Colossal Flatteners. you got to love that. You've got to love that. But is Adria really my only three? It really is. Ugh, that's devastating. So maybe, maybe I just have to run... Just cut that one. Or you gotta do, sometimes you do that weird thing where like you have like three rage resources and you try to find one so you can play Adriel. That's the only reason I need it. You can definitely mix resources in the deck. Yeah, I really just need one more. Now I could run the Karmic Cake here. A little engine. Let's see if any of these matter for the uh, at least, yeah, you may pay one if you pick a card and remove from the game. If you need to pick that card, you gain one life this turn. Okay, yeah, I get that. Mm hmm. Oh man, they did a great job balancing this. This is so good. Oh. Yeah, James. I so those these are like super rares that I guess were were those exclusive to the seed bundle thing. Yeah, apparently the last card is either a faction, a foil, or a super rare, ultra rare. Okay, so I can also go this way. I remember just being obsessed with this process. Restrictive deck building is the best. It's just the best deck building. You got to get good at, you know, making it happen quickly, too. Yeah, because you had time limits. Mm-hmm. Okay, put those out. And this is a good pool, too. One. Okay. I might just do the, the old school 2-2. Two, two. What, what factions are you running? I might want to show off some different... Rogue, Elitism, factions. and Warlord. And Warlord. Okay, that actually makes it easier for me. Let's do a little... Let's do a little, hey, how are you here? Got that there, and then I might end up... This is probably right. So let me look at, now the, the last thing is basically when you're deciding which one do you want to start with and which one do you want to go into, I like to look at cards that require additional resources and just kind of see which ones are most important. What, uh, what, what colors are you going? What are you? I think I'm going Banker uh, Arcanist. You want to borrow some Ultra Rares? Sure. I'm not using those. Miraculous Regeneration. Oof, that's a great card. Mutineers, Hyenas, draw two. Yeah, oh my gosh, these are great. I'll take the hiatus. Yeah, go ahead. It'll be, it'll be safe. Well, no, it was for me. And the Miraculous, yeah. I'm not gonna touch that worm. There's like weird uh, timing things around it that I never could quite get. Okay, yeah. So we're going into Arcanist. That means we get Gilda back in. 
Ken Great. says, don't give him those, LOL. <laughs> it's fine. We're here for a good time. All right, so this is going to be a weird game. Find out people rooting against me, so I have to be a nice guy now. That's right. Just kidding. Okay, oh, yeah. now. And we get a start. I'm on Elitism Road. Really, I don't need, I probably only need 10. I probably only need 10. So I'm going to start. Are you doing 1-1 one, one and then going into a faction? Yeah. So this is another strategy. I'm going to start with 2 greed, because I don't need to go any more into greed. All of my stuff is 2 threshold or less. The best thing, to when you can go 2, mm -hmm. that's usually, if, if the math on how many control and body, big body. Oh, I don't know that that's there, but <laughs> it'll be fun nonetheless. All right, so 12. We go 45 cards. Yep. That's right. I'm going to hit the bathroom before we dive into this. Exactly 45 cards. Oh my gosh, no trims necessary. So my deck's going to be worse, but a little bit more consistent. James, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I think these uh, spoil sleeves are great for Netrunner. For, uh, especially if you're playing like Jinteki or something. I think Tim, I think Tim may have did that, done that for a while. Yeah, Lion Day, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially the seed resources were just like, yeah, they are what they are. Now, these, these resources that we're using, the, uh, the really just kind of, it's just the art is just so insane. Like, I love this style of art on these resources. Um, like, do you have the, Bryce, can you pull up the Deception resource? Is that possible? We'll see if we can get that on the screen. This is one of the ones that I really love the most. It was like a, it's like a, a strange, it's just so deception forward. It's got this weird, uh, you know, person taking off their mask, which is their face, and then it's like, ah, oh, there's like knives and stuff behind him. It's just like, this is a cool theme. I really dig this. I kind of wish it was all in this direction, honestly. This is kind of over the top that I'm into. Like, look at that. It's great. Yeah, I agree, James. Yeah. It's just, it, it really fits. You can go over the top, you know, without being so overt, I think. Andrew, I don't know if those uh, spoiled sleeves are available. It's a good question. I know every time we had them, or every time somebody was using them, every, you know, it was like, where'd you get those? Like, everyone was really amped about it. The foils are great looking. Okay. I'm definitely going to be playing a weird game here. Get ready for that one. Ready to do this? Mm-hmm. You shuffled up? Basically. <laughs> More or less? More or less, indeed. All right. So who's going first? I'll be even. Even Steven. All right, I will go first. Five, 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 five. You're right, Wild Garlic. It does have that Edroth Ed feel. <clears throat> okay. Eight cards. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Resources here are pretty important. One, two, three. Nice. Nice. Oh, man. Great. OK. All right. Let's put these on bottom. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
All right, you're up. I'm gonna put one. One on bottom, I think. Yep, let's put one on bottom. Okay. So, starting out, start of the turn, play a resource, one obsession, as you might expect. Jordan asking, uh, ben, sorry, been jumping in and out. Any updates on the Flesh and Blood booster boxes? Expecting them tomorrow or Monday. So if you're on the wait list, you'll be notified as soon as those are in. Mm. Now the questions begin. Paid three for a shrouded demon. Covert two one three. Okay. Over to you. Let's play resource. Jordan saying, saw a comment that Dorinthia is overpowered, but I gotta say I think Katsu is the strongest of the first four heroes. You know what's funny about this, Jordan? That's a great sign for the game, obviously. Everybody has different opinions on what's stronger, but Bravo is actually winning the most tournaments, closest to being retired. So we have now three advocates. Uh, for three different heroes. Ken saying some of the foils have hidden stuff in them. In them. It's a code. What are you looking for? I'm looking for this. Micromajigs. Oh, I got some Micromajigs coming up, huh? Don't worry about me. <laughs> Probably the best thing about this game. Mm -hmm. There's a little time traveling to Micromajigs. <laughs> All right. So, let's put all this back. I will... Uh, pass with three open. Oh, hello. You got covert, no, no use in playing something. All right, first thing I'll do, play resource. Now we've got the weird, the weird turn. Tim says he still has his metal micromajigs. That's awesome. Or little miniatures. Swing for two. You got it. Mm-hmm. Actually, no. What? No, you don't. <laughs> Swing for two. I will play midget mine. Cost me two. Pick an attacking character. Inflict two damage to that character. Flip this card face down under its owner's control. Okay. Oh, he's got flip up five. All right. Uh, I got a response to that, actually. Okay. Pay one for the old mutineous hiatus. Destroy a character I own to draw two cards. That card is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, it slips down as a resource. These are good two cards to draw. Mm. Mm hmm. And, yeah, that goes away, too. And then, you know what? Oh, wait. This so is an item? No? No, it's tactic. Wait, is mine an item? Yeah, you've got to flip it. You've got to put it I down can't do first. It. Yeah, okay. Flip, flip, drop, and reverse it. One, two. It's a bummer. So, how about instead, when you start your turn, I'll play it for two on my turn as an item? Okay. I should have played cool. it. I was trying cool, to cool, trap cool. your. You still have your cover. We'll do the same it. thing if attack. you want, but now you know it's there. Yeah, sure. All right, I'll blow it up. I'll do it. You can do your thing. Wait, I already saw the cards. We'll keep it clean. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And they're good cards, so I want to play them. Ooh, I'm going to have one hanging resource, and I hate it. Good. Which means I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> uh, I'll pass. Okay. Hold, hold three. Start of my turn, I'll we'll play a resource. I'm at five. What madness is this? <laughs> nice skin, yeah. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> How'd you get to five? I, that item went under. Oh, right. Uh, let's pay for play resource. Look who's accelerating now. Let's play a pit boss. Plus one speed for each uh, deception I control. It's one. One speed. Wow, look at that guy go. You're up, homie. Mm hmm. This has been a real treat. Revisiting yeah. this part of my brain. Yeah. Oh. 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 Let's see, do I just draw a card here? Probably. Yeah, I'll draw a card. 
B Powers, the resource ramp in this game is awesome. It really is. The way they do resources and card draw is choice. All right, start of my turn. Play resource. Mm -hmm. And you got a big, uh, just a pit boss, huh? He's just hanging out, dude. Nobody likes that pit boss. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it again. I think. All right. I think that's right. Yeah. I don't think it's wrong. Get a plan for the future. Let's draw a card. That card is just stunning. These ultra rares are next level. Full bleed and foil. It's a revolution. That's great. I mean, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you do that? Shocker. I know that it's possible now, so it's like, why isn't everybody doing this? Why isn't Flesh and Blood doing this? I know. This? Why it's, wasn't Destiny doing it? It's that? redonkulous. Goodness sakes. Uh, swing for two with a pit boss. You got it. First blood. First blood. I know there is not a max hand size. In mm. fact, many banker decks would make Nimble that conscript. very, very <laughs> obvious. Remember that busted banker deck yes. that we built? Yes, I do. That old Ben Chin one. And then we showed up. Ben Ben Chin <laughs> spotted it from across. I'm good. Uh, right. From across the yard, and is like, what's this? And he saw like two turns. He's like, put this away. And he took <laughs> us back to his Gen Con hotel, and he was like, tell me more. <laughs> then he built it that night, played it the next day, and dominated. Yeah. All right, so a Karmic Cake, grabbing an Obsession Resource. And then also at the end of your turn, I'll pay three to draw. Like the crazy thing about this game, we've been talking about complexity a lot lately. And so like, the turn, let's play. The nuance Obsession. of choice is high in this game. So I can play it all day, like I'm fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. But I feel zero energy burn. No, yeah, because it because you don't have it, it moves as you would expect it to, right? It, it flows so nicely, uh, very impressive, really. It's good. All right, then let's do. We got to protect our protect ourselves. So let's go with two and a three. If you can defeat, you got a midget mine worth five, right? You can always flip that up for five. Mm -hmm. That's when someone's attacking. Yep. Huh. By the way, there's only 10 ultra rares, apparently. So getting six of them is pretty Bugatti. <laughs> that's that's well, incredible. How do you normally come in a box of this, uh, Ken, if you're still out there? Hmm. All right, let's take a shot. So we'll pay two there. Mm -hmm. What is that card? That's the Fountain Diver, just a one, two, three. It uses it, if it's in my discard pile, I can pay one, remove it from the game to give something three life. Nice. And then pay four for the Domain of Depravity. Apparently the odds are one in two boxes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> uh, boom. <laughs> All right, uh, that's my turn. All right. Now, the start of my turn, I can put a token on something. Everything gets minus one to all stats for every token on it. Mm, domain, domain of Depravity? Yep, yeah, Domain yeah. of Depravity. So I drew a card at the end of my turn. Or at the end of your turn. Awesome, Andrew. I'm glad you're getting those decks. Glad we can offer them for free. I got a Banker Cat right here, James. Fountain Divers on the board. Wishes do come true, especially when they aren't yours. You see a fountain, I see an opportunity. That's so funny. <laughs> um, well, at the start of my turn, I'll play a resource. Then I will attack for two with the pit boss. Attacking for two. My faction? Mm hmm. Take two. Now that three for, with the nimble con conscript. Same second verse, same as the first? Yep. I'll block here. Okay, you take three. Take three. I take one, and then it disappears. 
Actually, I shouldn't do that. I'll just take three, unless you got shenanigans. Right, you're good. OK. Three. Then a better play later. I'm going to pay six for the ultra rare Ooh, hired hand. There he is. For fired hand. That guy's good. I remember yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's a five, four, good. three. If he would be destroyed, I flip him face down as a resource. And when he is face down as a resource, he has petty vengeance. It's very funny. Cost, use this only while it's face down. Reveal this card, pay one, discard a card, pick a character, they lose a life. Yeah, he's super good. I also love the uh, flavor text under the name. It says, not going to not gonna make it to Lake Town this time. <laughs> okay. I have, I have one remaining. Start of my turn. Or whatever that is. Yeah. Go grab the, grab the door. Start of my turn. I really need to. Yeah, we'll do here. Play a resource. And again, you can play these, any card as a resource face down. And that really allows you to ramp no matter what you draw in the game. It's just, that's so impressively good. Start of my turn, Domain of Depravity. Let's deprave. Let's deprave the old nimble conscript. Leave that guy up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right on. OK. All right, so I think I'm going to sit here. I think I'm going to sit here. I put a token here. You're minus one all your stats. And uh, yeah. It's about to be a problem. Over to you. All right, let's draw or re. Let's uh, draw a card. Oh yeah, I love that guy. I do remember that, Kim, when you would put you would put fired hand in decks that didn't even have the resources to play it. Just, just to put, put it face it down resource. and start burning yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. All right. Pit boss for two. You got it. Fired hand for five. Response. Pay five. Flip up a redonkulous. Oh, I need to pay with that one. That's right. You can pay with the resource you're going to flip up inevitably. I have a reaction what before it resolves. A blazing zero. Mm -hmm. If you deploy this card in response to a tactic, terminate mm -hmm. that tactic. That's Put so that good. tactic into play under its owner's control as a face on resource instead of into the discard pile. OK. Um, you just got zeroed. I don't remember cancels. I'll just have to do it again, which is annoying. Uh, five strength. You can't take that. <laughs> Ken says, so good, redonk, and then pause. Oh, snap. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You just got dunked on. <laughs> yeah, cancels. Those are fun, right? Uh huh. Um, Were there cancels prior, like seed really two or weren't. before? No, I don't remember too many. Seed. I remember hating it very much. I think I probably wrote about how much, like, I think this ruins the game. It doesn't, obviously, but it kind of does. I don't think it was necessary. I guess I'll say that. Cancels add a whole form of fun. Mm hmm. And sarcasm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Take what what, 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 what would Redonculus do, have done? Remove for the game. Mm. You don't get him face down. I don't want that. You'll see it again. <laughs> I got to get him off the table. Uh, I got to take five here. Just make sure I don't have anything to take him. Oh, yeah, Tactician Vacation. Yep. Trading five resources for one is not exactly how you win. I concur. <laughs> Uh, sure, we'll attack with Nimble Conscript for two. Block. We got each other. I got you. Uh, then I'll spend... You remember Tactician Vacation? Or uh, Elitism? Yeah. It had, a co it had some kind of a cost to it, though. I don't remember the... the there was something interesting about that card, if I remember. It was really early. Mm. Well, let's just create problems, shan't we? Sure. Let's play a robustical badass. Mm -hmm. I have three rage, so at the start of uh, my turn, you'll take damage until Classic. you Classic. And it's your turn. 
Okay, end of the turn, let's pay three to draw. That's a classic. Then we will roll out. Start of the turn, I get to either play a resource or not. I think I need to play a resource. And I will. I'll play one here. Then we'll put a token on something. Let's put one. I guess we'll start killing that pit boss, probably. He's annoying. Although, all you have to do is a two strength and you just stuff him. <laughs> yep. He's a mess. Mm hmm. I might end up doing him. The Robusticles text is amazing. It ripped and ready for anything. Now, if only something would happen. <laughs> Swinging for two, five, three. Where are my bodies? Hmm. Put one on the pit boss there. All right. I'm going to kick it off by trying this Redonculus again. You got it. What's it do? It removes. I'm going to pick a character. <clears throat> the character's controller discards two cards. And then if you have three or fewer in your hand after that, you remove the character from the game. Here you go. Let's see if he's going. Thanks for allowing me to have fun. <laughs> And that will be it. All right. Uh, start of my turn, you take one. Taking one. Because why not? Uh, I'll draw a card, obviously. Hmm. Okay. Uh, swing for three. You got it. Swing for two. You got it. Hey, swing for one, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, draw a card. Let's pay four. Play resource. Use my resource. Play a resistance fighter. Ooh, I like that guy. And then I will pass. Oh, they don't stand. What is his text name? Uh, it provides a rogue resource, and then while I control a character I don't own, he gets plus two life, plus two right strength, and plus one speed. All right, starting my turn, I'll just token him. And he gone. Him. End of your turn, I'll pay three to draw. Start of the turn, do that. And then we get to play a resource or draw a card. We're going to play a resource. Mm. That obsession resource is disgusting. Good. It's very good. It is good, but it is gross. Play a resource there. Yeah, already token. OK, so we've done everything necessary. OK, now how do we get out of this? Tis the question. That is the question, isn't it? It reminds me of Flesh and Blood in the trade aspect. Like you're making the... You pay five for an ancestor. Because we're both building resources. Last game, I felt way more ahead than I was. Yeah. It can, it can, uh, it can really swap on you, too. I've been down to like one and two health, and then you like stabilize. Oh, yeah. I've lost like, plenty of games in that fashion. It's like, oh, no. OK, that's right. OK. Yeah, OK. Just your pile PT. All right, I can't forget about this stuff either. Recur. Life, resources, and destroy a thing that I own. Over to you. Take one. Taking one. Draw a card. Call me in the morning. Nice, 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 nice. Four life, you say. Well, swing with the pit boss. Take one. Mm -hmm. Let's draw a card. <laughs> Pump for four. Let's pay four. Play resource. Let's pay two for the necromantic healer. When he's in a, ba a party, uh, reduce the amount of damage done to anyone in the party by one. Okay. 
Is that and it? Then I'll pass. Yeah. All right. And let's get the pit boss with the domain. Here you go. In your turn, pay three, draw. And everything refreshes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's your time to shine. It's my time to shine. Okay. So if we do seven. Huh. I think I'm going to draw, which I don't like. Instead of resourcing? Mm hmm. Sometimes you need answers. Nice. Okay. I can get into this. I can get into this. All right, so if we do this, we got that left, that, that, okay. So let's start with, um, I'm going to pay four to flip the badass underneath, robustical badass, as a resource. Alluring quicksand. Alluring quicksand, that's right. He gone. And then. That's helpful. For you. Hmm. Do I start trading yet? Or, I think I stabilize. I think I keep trying to stabilize. Stay cool. I'll pass. OK. So I turn, I'll draw. OK, let's pay three. Draw. Just pay three. Draw. Isn't that great? Just pay three, draw, I mean. It's that simple. That in this game is like the key. It's everything. It is the key indeed. Um, let's go four for a resource. Let's go one for Mysterious Invasion. It's an item. I can deplete it, destroy two characters I control to pick a character, destroy that character. Okay. Got those micro projects flying around on that card. All right, into your turn. I'm going to pay one for Essence of Greed to gain four influence. What? I'll go back up to eight. Five, six, seven, eight. And then pay three. Hmm. A lot of times people get in the position I'm in, they just start trying to slam through mm -hmm. the damage, right? Sometimes you just got to play cool. Because if you just hang out and build and I fail, that's how you lose the momentum sweeps. Pay three for miraculous regeneration. What's that do? Wheel, let me tell how you. How cool are foils? I'm a fan. Actually, no, that's not, I don't like that. I'm going to pay three to draw. OK. Because it's ugly. OK, great. Start of the turn. Token there, mm -hmm. refresh. And draw. Yep. OK. Then let's see what this looks like. Three. Yep. Yep. OK. Then let's pay three for Miraculous Regeneration. Pick two characters. One of them becomes a resource. It's the Fountain Diver. One of them goes into my hand. It's the Shrouded Demon. Noise. Noise. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> pay three for the Demon. Mm. What up, Dread? Now it says, hey, sorry, miss the stream. Good luck. I'm going to rewatch it later. Awesome. Enjoy. Let us know what you think. And then I'll pass. All right. Start of my turn. Let's draw. Pay three. You know, forget about your flip ups either, you know? Let's draw again. Yeah. Actually, I don't know that I like flip up. I get it, but it is it does have a level of fiddliness to the game that I'm not quite as into. Let's draw a card. 
You can destroy two things to put some... Uh, destroy two characters, pick a character, destroy my character. I get it. I get it. Let's go research intern. Oof! Money. Uh, we'll cost, deplete it, reduce the cost, ne merit cost the next card I play by one. I'll pay two for an adjunct artisan. Mm -hmm. I can deplete him to reduce the cost of the next uh, item or item ability I play this by two. Not doing any of that business yet. But I do have a mysterious invasion in the tank if I want it. You do. Uh, yeah. I'll pass to you. Okay. End your turn, pay three, mm -hmm. draw. Very nice. Oh, that's so funny. I really can't play him now. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Start of the turn. Kill that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now I gotta choose. I gotta choose time to for choose. choosing. Choose to choose. Oh man. Do you even play this? It is potentially the way that I win. That's a good thing. That I would I lean towards those cards, you know. It's usually the goal. Sometimes. Sometimes it's not, I guess. <laughs> Um, I'm going to draw, because it, it could just matter so much. Yeah, that 10 3 source probably isn't the, the defining quality here, no, but you never know. it's not. All right, let's swing for two. Boom. First blood for me. <laughs> Jenna says, by the way, you guys have any thoughts on the Call of Cthulhu LCG? It's, he says, this is somewhat for, a forbidden one, especially on YouTube. But as I could understand, an interesting game like Mythos CCG Plus game in terms of LCG. I bought the course that once. What, what do you mean by it's uh, forbidden? I, it's definitely a possible game that we'd eventually play. Uh, I remember I bought a course at about a month before they announced the game was dying. But I've heard it's really good. I played it a couple times. Don't really remember. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. Cool. All right, we might we might we might stabilize here, you know. Um, let's see. One and two. Yeah. So let's pay one for a frisky fortune hunter. Okay. Um, where does this go? Attach. I lose two influence. When it's gone, I uh, gain game four. four. Playing the banker game. That's right. Um. Swing for three. I'll take it. Okay. Pump. <laughs> and pay three for a foolhardy desperado. Desperado. <laughs> oh. Covert oh. damage, but it will start killing me. You know, a little so, bit of this, you know, a little I, bit of that. <laughs> you gotta figure that one out. Mine? Over to you. Draw a card that started my turn. Hmm. Let's pay three and draw. A classic move. Isn't it great, though? You're yeah. in such control. You get to just draw and play resources you want. I love this system. Love this system. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Pardon me, <laughs> my lord. <laughs> okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's exhaust the research intern. Next Reduce. card is minus one. Let's pay seven for Gout Flame Talonclaw. Ooh. All right, a couple things happen. He's unique, he's nine strength, eight health. When he enters play, I can pick a location, an item, and or a character. If I do, destroy those picked cards. Yikes. So let's go these two. You, you do both or just you choose and one, And right? or. You may pick a location, item, and character. And or. And or. Weird. 
It already says may. Why does it need and or? Well, may would be the rest of the effect. You may do this other thing. Like okay. If you had none of that stuff out, I don't have to. Location under character. Okay. Um, can I respond to that? I can't Entering remember. Entering play? I don't think so. I don't. I think that's maybe. A, I think that's when you can't uh, respond to. And specifically, worth noting, he can't be taken control of, and he can't be blocked by characters with one strength or less. Uh, if he'd be destroyed, he flips face down instead, and he has flip up mm -hmm. nine. Okay. All right. So these guys go away. The location and the. Uh, the demon? Yep. And then, for my next trick... You can respond to him being played. You can't respond to the target trigger. Let's play two. Oh, wait, hold on. It, apparently, I can do these things. Dan seems to know. He's technically not on the table yet, right? You declare that you're going to play him, and then there's a response window. I do remember that. Yeah. Um, so I'll pay two in response. Oh, no, wait. It won't matter. It won't matter. That's fine. That's all good. There's no good way to do that. All right. Uh, I'll pay two for an opportune slot puller. There he is. <laughs> I love that card. <laughs> so much. All right. Um, and then you can go. All right. Thank you. Old Gout Flames coming at you. End of the turn. He is redonkulous, truly. End of the turn. Let's see. I think I'll go ahead and use the Karmic Cake, search my deck for a staple resource, pay two. Nice. And put it into my hand. It's cool because it gets it out of your deck. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it, really. And then I'll pay three to draw at the end of your turn as well, of course. Boom, boom, boom. Goes into my hand, pay three to draw. Okay. <clears throat> you got one card in your hand? Yep. Does it cancel anything? Could. <laughs> Zero resources makes that seem unlikely. Unlikely, yeah. <laughs> that does seem unlikely. Uh, start of the turn, I'll play a resource. Up to ten. Hmm. That says when it would be destroyed or removed from the game. What does removed from the game mean? Is that the same thing as the void? Yeah. It is the same thing? I think so. How Trying to get, void me? Well, yeah, how do you get rid of that You thing? don't. He's, you can't get rid of it. He's Gout Flame Talon Claw. Every turn you flip him up for nine but and I pay just nine. destroy things? He doesn't do Oh, yeah, he would destroy things. Yeah, he every one time thing, he destroys one character, things. Unless man. you have locations or something you're playing. It's ridiculous. But he can't attack unless he stays on the table. Well, yeah. He can block, though. That's not the thing I'm worried about. Um... He's the card you needed <laughs> in this moment. Okay, this will work. I saw him and I said, yeah, I'm probably going to have to play Warlord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Ken says technically no. Remove from game is gone forever. Void is like a second discard pile. Okay, so I can. You can void him. I can take care of him. Um, let's start with that while you have no money. Let's pay one for death fit for a king. Okay, what's it do? Pick a character with a unique keyword in its rules text. Put the character into the void. I'll respond. Deplete here. Destroy this. Nice. And this. <laughs> Reasonable. <laughs> uh, to destroy one of your characters, we'll go ahead and get rid of uh, the ancestor. I'm going to respond. I'll pay three. Cow flame goes in there. When he would go to the discard pile, he comes back in depleted. Okay. Because he's a ghost. Okay. That evasion's helpful here. It is, yeah, he's, I just remember him being really good in, uh, in this format. All right, and then I can recur this. Now, I don't know if I have any unique things. I might. I might try to do that, see what happens. Matthias Olsen, any uh, Keyforge Mass Mutation gameplay planned? Yeah, next next week. It'll be on the stream schedule. Okay. Interesting. Now there's no there's no curve that has Foolhardy Desperado winning, so I just have to kind of hang out there for 
Yeah. Pay three to draw. Mm hmm. Can always do that. Okay, nice. Very nice. Um, well, that's about all that I'm going to do, I think. You got that four speed, one strength, and then you pay one and you can get a bunch of strength, right? Well, I'll pay one, choose a card type, reveal the top card of the deck. If it is a chosen type, it gains plus two strength plus, and loses one life. But then the top card goes on bottom. So I can technically, no, I can only do it once, unless I had extra life somehow. And then I think there's a card here that matters. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. I remember that mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. Nice. OK. Um, how much does that cost? Not that I would ever do that. Never. <laughs> I'll pass to you with three. Three open. All right, start of my turn. Let's draw a card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, the memories. Insane. All right, let's uh, pay nine, pay eight. Flip up. Uh, we'll destroy here. Here's gone. Then I'll pay two for an impressive hero. He is impressive. Cost. Extra cost. I may pick a character. That one. Uh, when this character or the card is played, I pick the character. Deplete that character. Done. Uh, so. Let's take a gamble. <laughs> Opportune slot puller gonna attack. Okay, attacking my faction. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. This is the question, isn't it? Um, I feel okay about maybe doing this. It could go wrong or right. Are you gonna hit it or not? You know. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna gamble. Definitely. We know you're gonna gamble. It's just whether or not it's worth it. It's always the question, isn't it? He's going to the bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm so behind. I probably need to make bigger bets right now. Uh, let's pay two. Uh, it says deploy while an opponent is attacking you. Pick a location of my discard pile, and it becomes your new target. Mm, nice. So if you don't hit your slots, I get the domain of depravity back. All right. Assuming you're going to gamble on it. Oh, I'm gambling. <laughs> We're going to say character. All right. It's a location. It goes Woo! on the bottom of my deck. Take it's one. for one. Um, I have one resource. Let's go ahead and swing for two. Here or here? There. Yeah, didn't think about that. Whoops. <laughs> my old research intern getting in there. Yeah, that was a problem. Uh, you're up. OK. Wrong. Don't like that at all. Thank you. Uh, play resource. <laughs> Come again, please. <laughs> These guys are ready. This gout flame setup is ridiculous. Yeah. With Mysterious Invasion, it's just like, I can get rid of two characters a turn. Mm-hmm. Lordy. At the same time, I play just of that card. Okay. And this guy, yeah, every time he does that, he does that. Okay, we seem to lock him down, don't we? Desperado. And the card would be destroyed or removed from the game. Okay. Yeah. Bounce to hand is a different thing. But it is. Bounce to hand yeah. and this card would be the, the real answer. I've got it. You just gotta get them. But to do I want it? And you have to do it after I decide to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Like after the mysterious yeah, you need, invasion. Yeah, thing. you, you know, we need, basically need two bounces and a discard. Yeah. Three, 
I like watching your brain work on this one. Well, it's just a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's what we call the bomb of all bombs. Four, six, seven, eight. So I need 12, four, six, seven, eight, ten. He's the biggest big I've ever seen. He's big. He's not even rare. It's weird. What happened there? It's as weird as anything else. All right, so I don't have the money for that right now. And you've got that item to, you got one card in your hand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. But what are you going to do with it? Let's pay three to draw. Okay. I got it. That makes some sense. Um, I've got the hero. I need a hero. We're going to have to string together some weird stuff here. It's about to get funky. Um, pay two for executive order number 637OU7. Get out. Hmm? Beyond decree, thou shalt not interrupt the time of moving. <laughs> Leaves me a five. Ah, oh. that's good. Yeah, I keep him locked down at least. That's a gets a solid. At least he can't attack you. Yeah. Although technically, if I blow him up with this and then I re-flip him up, I can blow that up. Mm -hmm. But it's just a stall. I know it's a problem. Okay. Well, um, I think that's it. At the start of your turn, I'll pay two to tap that guy down. Before we get there. All right. I will end my turn. Yeah. Uh, let's use. No, we're good. You'll tap him down? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll pay two to do that. Draw a card. Mm, perfect. All right. Swing for two. Impressive mm, hero. Block there. Uh, let's use Mysterious Invasion. Destroy here and here to destroy that. All right, give me a second. An old big man goes down. Desperado. <laughs> Why don't you come to your senses? Okay. So this is still blocking. Mm -hmm. There's going to be nothing on the attack. You're going to pay a bunch to bring him back in. And then if I pay three for him to come back in, you just kill him. And then uh, you kill the frisky fortune teller instead, yeah, which is more or less the same. <laughs> uh, okay, he's gone. All right, block resolves. Mm -hmm. Let's pay eight. This is crazy. Yeah, this is going to be forever. It's a problem. Blow okay. those things up. You gain four. OK, gain four. Let's uh, fortune tell. You got it. I'll say character. Nope. One damage. Take one. Two damage. Take two. Uh, let's, because why not, right? Pay four. Nope, I can't do that. How many resources you got? Four. How many total? There's a ton. Twelve plus he was a resource, so thirteen. It's a ton. And you paid one for the fortune teller, right? So nine, one for the fortune teller. You paid ten so far this turn? He's eight. Flip up nine, though. Oh. Yeah. 
so I should have paid 10. One extra. Yeah. I had one floating last round, so it works out. <laughs> I'll play Adriel. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, oh, just sweet. <laughs> Pile it on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. Shaboykin. Hey, uh, Gallop Flame may have been too good. End of the turn, pay three to draw. There are bombs, obviously, but that's, that's insanity. Okay. Coming back Can, in. Can do you think Gout Flame's too good? Ten. All right. Then we either draw a card or play a resource. Um... That's fair. Ken says eight cost five thresholds meant to end the game. Yep. It's doing it. Ken says slightly too good. Yeah, I think he's a pinch too he's a pinch too too much. I think him destroying one of those three things Six. when he comes out may have been the thing. So start of the turn, let's go ahead and play a card face down. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can get something done here. Um, all right, six for the Flagitious Denunciator, which is hilarious. And then I'm going to do his thing straight away. So As a cost, you can pay to destroy a character. Then we'll denounce pay to pick a character, destroy this card. You have anything on the board that destroys anything, right? No, you Not already active. Used it. Nope. Yeah, okay. Boom. What are you destroying? I'm going to pick this one. Oh, wait. It goes to the discard pile. That's right. <laughs> there's nothing to do it here. It goes face under. Why yeah, not? There's nothing to do here. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, that might have helped. Ken says the flip up on him should have easily been more. Mm-hmm. Well, um... How many cards you got? One? Let's hold off on this. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work, right? That's correct. <laughs> Adriel's flavor text is hilarious. Ultimately, he didn't do a great job in the bottom. He really tried, though. Bless his heart. So if, if I don't have anything out, I guess you have to choose your own stuff. That's interesting. Is that right? Yeah. You may pick a may. location. No, you may. That would make it better. Cannot take control of this card, and it cannot be blocked. OK. If it would be destroyed, flip it under. I've got a couple of ways to deal with it, but I need one turn where I don't have to deal just with it. deal with it. And then I have the money to deal with it. What up, Kang? Uh, anything weird in here that I can recur? No, no. Ah, oh, that would be really cool. People are saying. Uh, if you had to destroy a rage resource to flip them up. That makes sense. That would that'd be much better. Let me see. So I'm going to search my deck. Before I play this, I'm going to see if I have a unique thing in here that's worth getting. And it's one strength or less that can block? That can't block. Cannot block one strength or less? Yeah. OK. Sounds so like a good day, Kang. Look at the top two cards. I'm going to find a way out of this. It would be awesome. That's about the only way. Let's see. This, you can destroy. Ugh. OK, I'm not cool. sure. Yeah, I just kind of have a two kill on tap. Yeah, it's too much. It's a lot. That's too much. you good. Okay, so we do this. Uh, pick, uh, pick character. Oh, no, wait. It does work. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. This does work. It doesn't destroy the character. It destroys this card. Three, four, five, six. 
So then we pay two to denounce, pick a character, this one, destroy this card, put that character in its owner's hand, then look at the hand and choose a character in it. That player discards that character. Mm. You did it. We did it. We so got it. bounce the hand, and then you look at my hand. It's a resource. Yeah. Him, and you discard it. All right, hey, that but works. can you do three, four, five, six? So if I'm, I hit that slot. I'm one away, so if you hit the slots, yeah. That's, that's still, you, ha you found it. The flagacious denunciator. Flagacious, yeah. Come and pop up. Uh, okay. Try to win next time. Go for it. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Goku saves the world on. <laughs> Goku saves the world. All right, let's pay three to draw. Let's pay three to draw. Don't you do one damage to my faction. Don't you hit those slots either. It's a, it's a slot in time. <laughs> oh, wait. We were slotting. I just put all my... That was definitely not first down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, getting somewhere. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. All right, well, let's start. I seem to remember in C, like, all these Warlord uniques got weirdly good. Gideon and Adriel were busted. Like, just like, what? So Gideon... Because they work together, right? Gideon couldn't take damage while he was attacking. Adriel couldn't take damage while he was blocking. Right, right. And they were just cheap. One, co like one, one cost, cost and two costs? Cost? Yeah. yeah. Let's go with the option slot puller. Uh, yeah, uh, you're, he's one. You're I'll good. pay one to pull the slots. Don't do it. Character. It's a tack pick. Good. Goes on down. One damage. Uh, let's swing damage. with the assistant. Two more. Taking two. Adriel for three. Down to one. Oh, I've got Staying one. Staying alive. Staying alive. I'll pay six for the Draconaria Slither form. <laughs> uh, he's a 4 3 3 unique. When he is blocked, X is his card's strength. Inflict X damage divided how you want to the blocking party. Okay. When he is destroyed, inflict X damage divided however you want to the opponent's characters. Okay, cool. So it's just a weird octopus thing. Uh, snake thing, I guess. Yeah. It says Coiled Carnage. End of the turn. Three to draw. Is it the end of your turn? Yeah. Just stacking, stacking the table. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. Four, and we five, were swinging. Six, seven, eight, I really was nine, hoping I went on that slot pull. 10, 11. I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Now here's the question. Yeah, here mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the question. Here is the question. Is it possible? That is the question. That is the question, isn't it? I'd love to see you win this game. Actually, do I? I don't know if I need a resource or a card. I think, I think I play this as a resource. Let me just look at what that looks like. This happens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight happens. Uh, You're dancing. I'm dancing like crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's technically netting me one resource. Um, I'll draw. Okay. Because you can also just mysterious invasion after you kill me. Let's start out by paying five for perturb. Look at your hand. Choose a card. Discard something from the board of that type. Is that all resources? It is. Oh gosh, it's a bummer. All right, can you, you just got a resource? Yeah, you can. That, but if you can, you can get rid of like one of my thresholds. Yes, I will do that, but I, I can't get things that can block four things. Mm. I was hoping I'd get rid of one and then mm. put a body out, and then I can block two. Yeah, I would, I'll get rid of a rogue for you. <laughs> that would do it. <laughs> uh, and then six for the flabbergasting philosopher, and again, four life. So I had a play, but resources are not what I needed to see there. Unfortunately, yep. Draw card. All right. Um, let's attack with the Slither form. Yeah? If you block, you take four damage. Mm-hmm. 
If you don't block, you take four damage mm -hmm. to your faction. Yeah. Um, and then when you destroy him, you can just do four here, right? Yep. Uh, so it doesn't much matter, does it? Boom. Block. Four to you. And that happens immediately? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slither form. Yeah, right, you got me. You got me a million times. Smashed. Decks. Tried to stay afloat. There was, a, strangely, some possibility there. I just... I. That I mean, was just too much. Yeah, I mean, it was just too much too fast. Th there's no no deck I could build that would... I, I couldn't deal with that and construct it. The, the problem That's was <laughs> both the fact that I was already ahead, and then I played the big beat stick that's, like, impossible. He wins games. It's just crazy. He wins your games. All right, what do you think? We did it. Did that we was, do it? Yeah, I think we did it. That was that, good. That was a good reason. I mean, that when you're playing sealed, there are bombs. It's it's just a part of the game, but you, it's. I mean, I had the removal as the thing. I I think, it just uh, your your the bombs you were playing were, I was trading too bad. In fact, I think th when it went sideways was you canceling the five cost tactic. That's absolutely right. I, I can't win paying five. You pay one, and then I pay five again. I paid ten to get rid of that one thing. Yeah. Can't do that. Yeah, and I think that's the. Uh, that's why it, one cost cancel is so troubling to me. So wild. That's like not. Uh, that's not limited to like a three cost event or higher or four cost yeah. event or something. Yeah, I mean that's. I I seem to remember when we played back in the day though. Like when you're playing spoils, particularly limited, there there would be a couple big exchanges per game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, usually how limited. They were just works. game defining. Like my one cost cancel on the five. Uh, was just a you know that that was the turn that that's what let me get up like twenty five to seven or eight or whatever that was the turn yeah and then I just put the big beat stick down I think that's why you see the the curves like we talk about where it's like you have to have the biggies yeah because it's like once you have the tempo like that you drop a bomb and it just becomes I mean a bomb that you can't get rid of actually I had the I think I had probably the only card that can actually just get rid of that that guy. totally. But I had to wait until everything was tapped. Your item wasn't tapped, so you couldn't destroy him. Like, those two together is really where the money is. Yeah, and this is obviously not a uh, super frequent card you're going to see. Yeah, so, right, right, right. Uh, so, like, that actually, that paired with the thing is probably just unstoppable. Yeah, and I, I remember and having sealed. sealed pools where it's like, and it happened in Destiny, too, but I remember having sealed pools where you just have some combo. And it's like, if this it's combo so hits, mm -hmm. it's like unimaginably good. Just lines up. That's one of the best that I've seen. But I honestly. also, just like you had the, the actual specific answer to mm -hmm. it, um, <laughs> I remember once you are familiar with the sealed pool, real recognizing like, here are the cards that stop the combos. Like yeah. There are certain combos, where it, whether it's an item or a character or uh, an ability, and it's like, this is the, like if I was looking at my stack of cards I opened, it's like, I might go this color because it has this one answer to whatever the problem card in this set is, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, So you just start to understand the format in the pool, but it, there's definitely some RNG there. Yeah, well, that's sealed, yeah. I remember that for sure. Yeah. It's so good, though. I love this. Like I would continue playing this forever. The recognition, like, again, we haven't played in a decade, but, like, you open six packs, and you can immediately jump in like that? I mean, that's that's one of the huge advantages of the format. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. It's so good. What uh, What are your thoughts? What, well, what stuck I, out? I, you know what my thoughts ultimately are? Um, I remember, and this kind of reminded me of it. You want to flip to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that I didn't like Seed nearly as much. I just, and that reminds me of it, because all the cards that I was looking at that I was like, ah, this is, I feel like Seed jumped onto a lot more complexity. Wasn't that when they introduced Flip Up? and some of those other mechanics. So. Mm -hmm. There were some weird mechanics going on there. Not weird, but that's when Flip Up came in. That's when some of those like really good, is that when Gideon came in mm -hmm. and Adriel? Yeah, that was all seed one. It seemed, it seemed like it broke the... Remember Noble Sacrifice? Oh yeah. It seemed like it broke the, whatever the algorithm was that the cards are balanced around in second edi first in first edition part one, first edition part two. I think that to me is like the golden spoils card pool experience. I think all I think I feel like that was so tightly balanced. Those cards were so tightly balanced, and Seed kind of blew it open, uh, and had some like, oh, it had more of the like I got this thing and is super good, like really good, and you can't do anything about it. I'm talking about Sealed primarily. Like when I was playing Sealed in First Edition Part One and Part Two, it felt a lot less. It felt like a little more constrained, and then Seed was like the edges are like big. Like, if you get this, yeah. it's too good. Or if you get this, it's too good. 
so I actually, does this, this doesn't have any of the, does that have some of the first edition cards in it? Mm -mm. It's just seed. Yeah. Oh man, I would love to track down those cards. Well, we have constructed, we do not, the, the boxes do not exist. Huh. First edition, second edition. Wow. Gone. Uh, we do have a cube though. That? You remember that you sock puppet? You remember the sock puppet? Sock yeah. yeah. Well, those kinds of cards are the ones Jock's that. Jockstrap. Micro Magic shipping container. Um, Sproing Magic. Basic node. So, like, yeah. that, there were stuff in second, like first edition part two that was pretty busted too. Like mm -hmm. Sporting Majig and Micro Magic shipping container were crazy. Um, they were good. Even like Craghammer, Toolbox Elf, Beefy Elf, mm -hmm. the research assistants. I feel like the thing about this, the first two sets was the cards were more fundamental. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. But it's like there were still busted things. It was it, it was like, but the like removal was just like, what was the uh, obsession card pay to bounce character? Oh yeah, the purple haze stuff. Purple, it's just yeah. like yeah, it was very fundamental. Um, and then they they play a little more jazz by seed, but I think about some of the cards too, like the billionaire, which I loved, but like, it's such a problem from design perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I, how does that even? I forget how that even works. Uh, you could, you can basically can. Uh, is it the one that you flip sides of the table? Yeah, or right. you destroy. No, they banned that one because it was too. Oh, whatever no. that was. There's, the, there's also the moose. It was something where you you put stuff over here. You could you could trigger your opponent's effects or something. I think was billionaire. Yeah, and then you, you could use their effects. You could use their effects as and though you were them. You could throw the hollow moose over there or something, and then trigger the effect on their stuff. And I yeah. mean, it was insane. In constructed, that was insane. Yeah. Constructed spoils was but always insane. I feel like they had cards in the first set that were like. If, if they resigned in a game now, we would look at them and we'd say, you should never print a card like sure, that. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, like, no. they, they were extreme in that way. Those cards, though, were extreme in Constructed. There was some, there was some absolute, like, combo potential in Constructed. Emergency obfuscation or yeah. something? Yeah, that's what it was. So I don't, like, that's fine. If you have some super strong stuff that you can string together in a Constructed deck, like, that's fine. We also had all the Banker Madness. The ba I mean, yeah, but again, it's Constructed, right? Yeah. That's all like these yeah. weird combo pieces that you can figure out how to fit together. But the sealed and the draft environment felt a lot more just like good trades going on and a lot less of those like spiky moments. And a lot, it was like more kind of zoomed into the table. As I remember it, of course, that's probably rose colored glasses. Sure. Of just like the early days when I was just like obsessed with the game. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic, man. Well, we did it. Thanks, guys, for watching. This has been super fun. It's the spoils. Absolutely classic game. Uh, and can you still find this? Yeah. Y Daniel Sinistee's cards has a good amount of it. You can find it around eBay and on the internet. They did a 10th uh, anniversary edition draft set that is on eBay, apparently. And you, you can definitely still find it. It's not one of those impossible. It's 2006, so it's a little more recent. And they, they print a decent amount. Oh, of yeah. It. I remember the second edition, right? They had second edition. It was the reprints of part one and part two with yeah. Seed Saga reprints and stuff. I remember that. Mm -hmm. This it had so many weird little variations there at the end. Only in like a year and a half. Everything Two was just trying to yeah, bring it, it back. Uh, yeah. Well, cheers, Ken. Thanks, everybody. Take care. This is. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's been a blast. I'll uh, get out of here and turn the cameras off. Zach, take them home. I'll take us away. All right. Hey, Stephen said it. I'll repeat it. <laughs> it's been great having everyone here. Uh, Revisiting the spoils was fantastic. Seeing a bunch of familiar names in chat was awesome. Daniel, thank you so much for sending the the. The cards our way. Uh, if you haven't checked this out, uh, you definitely it's it's definitely a unique moment in tabletop when this came out. I think it's an incredibly designed system. So privilege having you guys here. Stay safe out there. We'll be back tomorrow with some Arkham Horror next week with a full schedule of streams. So stay tuned, stay safe, and we'll catch you guys.